I have. might reveal Wait, something. Who has it? Me. Um, no, I have the ethereal string. Oh, you do. Because I brought it into the wizard. Um, oh, that's The right. death string. Yes. <laughs> the thing that almost the, killed me. Um, <laughs> Mage and Cajun stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Notice how it almost killed me, and yet I'm still curious about it. Well, you know that. Alcott. Wizard things. Yeah, wizards. <laughs> Just wizard things. <laughs> Just wizard things. How they roll. Rolling themselves up. Okay. Hey, Keith, good to see you today. It's really unique wizard. You should play a wizard that just doesn't care about it. <laughs> just like, ah, I just ah, be able to do magic. Whatever. That would be Kate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Greg, good Kate to see you, my friend. I don't care. What sir. level is stone shape? What spell? What level of the spell? Yes. Because uh, I need to know for my spell books. Let me pull up the. Because <laughs> I have basically. The and by the way, you guys are audio live. Before they go, took it off of the store, they is the app store. Oh sure. really? Yeah. So you can't get the Pathfinder handbook on the app store. But anymore. because you still have the app. But because I never. Just All right. So. Installed it. I believe Mike Three is that you? Yeah, no, you're not on yet. Okay. You're not running behind. It is no, a not at all. level four wizard spell. Okay, so level that, three for that puts me at druid, once but. I put in all the spells I bought and eventually put in stone shape. That puts me at 98 pages in my spell book, meaning I have two more. Uh oh. Before yeah, I have to buy a whole spell book, new yeah. spell book. Hey, Rory, good to see you. Start carrying around just well, an entire a fifth library. of your spell book when you start off is taken up by cantrips. Right. Yeah, uh -huh. 20 pages yeah, uh -huh. of cantrips. So. Uh -huh. Share two. I don't know how many cantrips you get at the start. Probably the same. I think I get like half of what you get. Just we'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. There's also some spells. I'm gonna run up and get some coffee. We have we have Wait, Ball's book. So far, I've been the only one looking through it. I would. Yes. That was one of the things I wanted to role play as well because there's Where like Ghoul line? Touch. There's some some yes. good spells in here. Like yeah. False Life might be good for you. Um, Perfect. You could even. I have Fly. You could learn Fly. Yeah. You can learn some of the spells like I have, like Mage Armor or Magic Missile. Yeah. I mean, mage armor would be super useful. I don't yes. know if you have it or not. I but. have have armor of some sort. I cannot re recall the specific name of the spell at the moment. Oh, man. Oh. And I... Oh. Oops. I'm trying to break my phone now. Yeah. Threw it on the ground. Adult behavior. I threw it on the ground. <laughs> hey, Pat. <laughs> I am watching you, Mr. Reaper. I have a, uh, a new nickname, I guess. All right, we'll get started in just a minute. Um, but thanks, everybody, for joining us. It should be a fun session today. And uh, we'll talk about what we got going on today and some giveaways and all kinds of fun stuff. Hey, Caleb. Good to see you on with us as well. Yeah, so once I add Scry, I'll be at 89 pages. Wow. Enjoyed reading about your campaigns in Discord and all the other D&Ding that's happening. A lot of D&Ding that's happening this weekend. A Crimson Ale. Always a pleasure, my friend. Gary Hawk is in a. Uh, Gary, Gary, Gary Hawk. Gary, Gary, Hawk. Gary, Hawk. Gary Hawk is in. Uh, hey, by the way, Pat, I sent days. you. 11 days! <laughs> 11 <laughs> days! Oops. Oh my gosh, it can't be. Pat draws. Um, I sent you a, uh, a, a, a DM in Discord. Uh, check that out when you get a minute. Nightheart Gaming! Good to see our friends from Nightheart. I checked out some of your streams again this week. Always gorgeous stuff. Crimson, we hope Wait. he has been Satan. Did something happen to Cade? Why is everybody wishing me good luck? Because <laughs> no he's only killed Cade. one pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Millie. Millie. Uh, oh, yeah. right. And you've been losing pieces of your body oh, session yes. after session. Yeah, Millie, Millie had yeah, her final send-off this, this past week. So. Yes. Okay, so I don't think I have quite as many as you. Because yeah, I have whatever the four extra are. Right. You start as a wizard with 20, so. Gotcha. I, mean, I could probably count. I might not actually have 20. That's just what the book says. I'm going to double check that. Pages? <laughs> yeah. It says your first 20 pages. I'm just going to count them. That, I don't think that's 20, right? Well, it scrolls. Oh, okay. Now I've lost my count. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're good. One, two. I know I've got something. 
Yep, 20. Um, you probably don't have, like, prestidigitation. I do. Do you have open slash close? Yes, I do. Arcane Actually. mark? Yes, I have that. Bleed? In oh. fact, I used arcane mark last. That's right, you put it yeah. on the page. Yes. yes. And you're, it, is that the letter that you sent with the hawk, or the letter that you sent to try and... To the hawk. With the hawk. Yeah, Just recently. The hawk. Yes, the yeah, east. because that was my, <laughs> that was my personal letter. Yeah. Um, the other letter was from Irda to the other town. But we don't, so. we, we as characters and don't I know what's in the letter, obviously. Right. <laughs> I want right. to read what right. you um, wrote at the end of it, because who did you address it to? Is it your dad? I love the freaking at the bottom, which you wrote from Ashes I Rise. That's yeah, so, so interesting good. to learn. Okay, uh, Tidebeck. You never actually address them as anything, I don't think, other than. <gasps> what do you know about me? <laughs> no. Cade <Kate> Guess. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I'm thinking about the mayor oh, and what I'd like I to need do to, be to on him. The correct character. <laughs> oh, well, you're to right. him or <laughs> with him. No. I want to use the thread on him. Oh, no. Why? Assassin. <laughs> Why do you want to kill this guy? Because I don't like him. He's evil? He's evil. Oh, the mayor. Lord I thought mayor. you meant the mayor. Oh. Shreed. Not the castle. Oh, no, 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 no. Not the castle. Back, back at Magnamar. I was like, what Shreed done? <laughs> I think I was thinking of shield. I have shield. <laughs> All right. Which gives me a plus four. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm clicking over oh, to live video. Let me make yeah. sure everybody's audio is thing. up. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody looks minute. good. Gotcha. Level. It's like an and hour level. here we go. Yeah. Nice. So for me, it would be... Oh, actually, I got one more thing I got to put up. I almost forgot. Because you're now. Yes, yes, I oh, uh, hit nine, actually. Yeah, you did, because you rested. To, I need Eamon's to, uh, level nine. Yay! Hmm. You might want to do that. Roll for... Oh, hit dice. Guys, I got your message. Thank you, Pat. Eight? That makes sense. I think so, yeah. Because for wizards, it's a d6. Mages is yes. d8, I believe. Yeah. Eight. In, in three yeah. point... In, in, I think, original third edition, wizard was a d4 hit. <laughs> I know, in first and second edition, it's d4. Yeah, but I think in, in Pathfinder, which is what we kind yeah. of use, it's a D6. It's, 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 it is a D6. All right. Which is why my health kind of bumped up at one point, because originally it was like 28 at level 8. Oh, no. And I have plus one con. Oh, no. Like, the, yeah, it was bad. Now it's like 45 or something, which is still One solid right. hit from a giant near So real quickly here, 45. we're going to, um, let me actually go back to this. I'm going to let everybody say hi. 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 Well, they can't see you wave just yet. Now you can wave. Now they can see you. Um, I'm going to pull up one more thing I need to have on our sponsor screen here. Oh, no. And uh, you can chat with our viewers. Everyone, viewers. good to see you today. Thanks for joining us. Well, you knew that question. We've rested once. Correct. How much HP do we gain? Well, no, I mean, you guys have, I'm, a, I'm presuming that we're at the end Montage of the five days so now. Just... Yeah, so you've had ample time for right. healing and rest. Okay. Everyone and is I would have healed. healed anybody. Everyone is fully restored, all of that we, good stuff. If yeah. we need to, like really heal up we can like triage some stuff we get up to full but <laughs> yeah but i mean irda would have prepared all of her healing spells so she would have been healing How's my hair look? <laughs> thank you for the resale back a little stubble maybe <laughs> yeah yeah ding back i think i'm rocking a a one <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> a one <laughs> a one <laughs> all right and all right so sorry for that delay there. I wanted to get this up and ready to show you. And so uh, welcome to Blue Box. This is our Rune Lords campaign. We're calling this session 52, uh, which I think is actually conservative. Uh, I have a hunch it's actually more than session 52, uh, but we are um, excited about kind of getting the numbering right so we can track them <laughs> a little better from here. So we're gonna go to our sponsors quickly. And before we talk about our sponsors, we've got to talk about upcoming GaryCon. Uh, GaryCon, the ethereal, which I like that they're calling it the ethereal GaryCon, not the virtual GaryCon, how very D&D &D is. That is very fun. Uh, and it's gonna be March 25th through 28th. And of course, it is gonna be an action-packed uh, four-day weekend. We have all of your favorite streamers are going to be a part of that. We're working directly with uh, Luke Gygax and the whole team over there. Just super excited uh, for GaryCon coming up. And then uh, we're actually at Blue Box. Uh, let me go back here so you can see me talking and we're gonna move back and forth. 
Boom. 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 Plus, when I do that, you just get to see that animation more, which I think is so cool. Great. So uh, we're going to be uh, streaming three different times at GaryCon here on Blue Box. In fact, I've got my times written down here. Yep. Uh, I don't know if I have this is the updated times because they change. So we're first one is Thursday. Which I believe is it was at two. I think it's at three now. Oh, let me, let me yeah. Can you pull it up? Uh, so we're I streaming. Will pull up the page. <laughs> we're, we're streaming our our Greyhawk Awakening campaign. Uh, special GaryCon style will be on that Thursday. Then Saturday, uh, early in the morning, I'll be up. Uh, I've got a 6 a.m. Lore Masters Arcanum stream during GaryCon on Saturday morning. Then uh, the open Blue Box session uh, on Saturday. And that should be at 1 o'clock. Do I have the times right oh, there? I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up. Uh, it'll be the... Saturday at 1 o'clock. I believe this is all time central. Uh, and that's going to be an open session. I know some people have already oh, signed up. I haven't even logged in to check to see if it's all full yet. It might be. Schedule. Uh, but if you log into the GaryCon site for tabletop events, uh, you can find Blue Box there and see if it's full or not. Even if it is yes. full, uh, go ahead and click the waiting list because sometimes we have people that have to reschedule right. or move around. Uh, and then, uh, then lastly, uh, Greyhawk Awakening session number two. So it'll be our third full stream plus LMA uh, on Sunday uh, in the afternoon from three to seven. And then I'm also doing the DM roundtable, I think, uh, if I remember correctly. So it's going to be a very busy weekend here at Blue Box for GaryCon, and we're super excited. Thank you to Luke Gygax and the whole team over there at GaryCon, and also to uh, Jay Scott, Lord Gazumba, uh, who is helping put so much of it together, and uh, as always, doing so much for the community. So uh, get your tickets, get signed up. If you're not already, Ethereal GaryCon coming up here very, very soon. I can't believe it's all most upon us. Uh, all right, now let's talk about our sponsors quickly. First of all, uh, we're going to have to announce the last time probably we'll play this video at least for a while. Uh, Dragon Crafting Guild, our original sponsor, John, a great guy. We talk frequently, but his real life job has pulled. Awakening session one is two o'clock on Thursday, and Greyhawk session two is three on Sat Sunday, 3 p.m. Yeah, Sunday. I've got all those times right there. Yeah. yeah, so it's Thursday at two, uh, then it's Saturday at 6 a.m. for the LMA, then Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, for the open uh, game, and then Sunday at three. Uh, plus, we've got uh, our own Shorwin is going to be in the joust. It's just going to be a hugely busy weekend. And yeah, I know you couldn't hear me over the music. I go, that's kind of the idea, though. When it's headbanging music, yeah. you shouldn't hear me over it. But no, I was just saying that uh, Dragon Crafting Guild John, real life, uh, has come up, and his job, his, his, uh, he's had a job change. He's actually not able to craft anymore. He's had to take his Etsy store down. Uh, he's hoping at some point he'll be able to return. Uh, but for now, uh, DCG will be sort of uh, not in the business anymore. Uh, but, of course, I do still have, and let me show you this animation one more time. <laughs> Proud of that. Don't tell me you ever get tired of that. I know you're not. No, it's um, I am giving away this tray when we hit 1,000 followers, and I think we're at like 970 or something. Uh, so it's going to happen here, maybe before well, GaryCon, well. but certainly during GaryCon. Mm -hmm. uh, and this will be yeah. the last uh, for at least uh, sometime, maybe last ever. This is a beholder tray uh, from Gorgeous. DCG, one of a kind. I think the best one he ever made, and uh, that will be going away uh, <laughs> very, very one. soon. Um, beautiful, Pat. And then uh, our other sponsors, just quickly, uh, we want to say thank you to Cozy Gamer, a maker of great dice. And you can see their Etsy channel there. Maker of really cool dice and also just a really good person. We love Cozy. And then uh, also, Mantic Games, makers of the incredible Terrain Crate. Uh, these guys are awesome. They've got new uh, stuff that's coming out here in the next month or two. Uh, we'll be featuring some giveaways of their stuff on GaryCon as well. Uh, Mantic Games, very, very cool. And then our newest sponsor, Mike Disney at The Art of Mike Disney. Um, he not only uh, is a fantastic painter, uh, he sculpts. 
He he uh, he dremels bowl, yeah. bowl, bowling balls into skulls, uh, and of course we gave away the first of these prints. You can't see them right now because I'm not on that one. I'll show you in a second. <laughs> uh, we gave away the prints. We got more prints. We'll have minis on the table soon uh, from Art of Mike Disney. And so thank you to him and to all of our Over sponsors. Board. Okay. Oh, yes. Frederica. And I didn't bring up Frederica. Frederica draws. Uh, she does all the art artwork, including uh, we'll be unveiling the new artwork for Ilya uh, on our two... What, did I get it wrong? Ilandra! 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 That we'll be unveiling on Tuesday night for Greyhawk Awakening uh, session. So and of course, happen. lots of things happening in that campaign as well. All right, yes. let's get to what happened last time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, ooh, Pat, that's right. Uh, let's get to what happened last time. And as we do it, let's try to move through it quickly, yep. but let's also touch on what happened in the Discord channel. So what I'll do, do is I'll one? have you give us what happened kind of the last time, and yeah. then I'm going to let Alcott catch okay. everybody up. Because believe it or not, guys, there are actually some of our fans that are not in our Discord. What? I don't what? understand. Not doing it it's Discord. shocking to me. I don't know why they would want to miss out on all that great role play, uh, but some of them do. And so we'll do that real quickly. So tell us what happened last time. Okay, so last time we started off with party split, because that always is a good way to go about things. Um, and Alcott was in his uh, former headmaster's office, and he was given a small parcel from his uh, father that included a scroll, uh, a quickly scrolled uh, note and a the remains of what looked like kind of a stone way, ring, but half of one. Um, and uh, okay. uh, Alcott took all of so, those things, spoke a little more with his headmaster, and told him that he would be going to see Mrs. Mistress Irba um, in the archive to see if he could find out some more information about the Thessalonians. Uh, Alcott continued uh, on letting the guard know that if, if my friends show up, that's where I'm going to be. Um, and he went to visit the very severe and um, very um, stubborn <laughs> stubborn uh, <laughs> Mistress Irba, who, w if not for the uh, very uh, good uh, diplomacy role <laughs> that Alcott had made, um, <laughs> he would have not gotten anything out of her. Uh, she was rather reticent to uh, interact with him at all, in fact. Um, but he uh, managed to get a book about the Thessalonian language, if I remember correctly, yep, got that. Um, and uh, was told to depart immediately. <laughs> um, so then he... Uh, uh, went by the guards again, told them that he would be in the garden if his friends showed up, and then spent the rest of that day in the gardens while the rest of the party was at the captain's club ah. uh, <laughs> with Cade. Um, and Irna was encouraging Cade to start maybe making some connections to help possibly supply his uh, tavern in uh, the fort, uh, though Cade was more interested in uh, just having a good old time. Um... <laughs> Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he managed to uh, kiss another poor, poor, poor woman. Um, <laughs> they should be liking it by now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> Anna played some music with the uh, bard in the tavern just to, ha you know, relax and have a little fun. Um, and after, you know, a good amount of time had passed uh, and <laughs> shenanigans had transpired. Got somebody uh, to dance poor, with. Yeah, poor yeah Amen. yes. Eamon got to dance with the uh, barmaid that Kate had actually kissed. <laughs> Um, um, uh, Eamon, who who had a very trying experience with us uh, in the tavern, uh, we rejoined Alcott uh, with a uh, bit of challenge from one of the guards, kind of being a little unwilling to give any information until Irida agreed to talk to him a little more. Yes. Um, Hammer. Hey, Damn. real quick, let's pause. Oh, Can you, yep. Miss, uh, yep. Ms. Mod? I will. So for all Man of Hammer. you losers, no, we don't buy followers here at Blue Box. We, we don't coerce followers yeah, here at Blue different. Box. We yes. don't game the system. Man. We attract people that want to watch fun old school D&D, wow. and all of you be gone Man. from our channel. Ban, 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 ban. I do not want any spam and I do not want to buy followers please continue. all right so this is the perfect point to say once they all erupt there was a teleportation spell cast and <laughs> we're now back in Blue Box. We're back. um and uh, basically what happened towards the end of the session last time was Irda went up to the top of the tower mm -hmm. to create the shrine to Saren Ray which actually brought favor from her uh 
patron, um, and uh, she was granted a plus one, permanent plus one to her charisma um, uh, modifier, or not the modifier, to the score. Um, and then uh, also, um, Eamon uh, wrote a letter and sent it once again with his hawk, uh, which he has found a new way of, of summoning. 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 Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, the hawk took that letter off into the east. Um, and you can read that letter in the Discord. Yes, you can. Um, and I'm still disappointed with all of our viewers allowing the whistle. It was great. <laughs> I think I think it was I think it was the way the question was worded. <laughs> 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 where we ended our uh, at the in-person session last time. All right. So talk to us about the Discord outcome. So then we as players sort of got together and decided how long do we want to be in Fort Rock Frost. <laughs> we decided five days, and so on the Discord, we spend about three quarters of one day. Um, so it, it starts with Alcott waking up from his cottage that he spent the night in the woods in, making his way into right. the um, fort kind of later in the day to realize that Cade was pestering Irda for feathers <laughs> so that Alcott, who wasn't even there, could cast a spell for her, or for him, sorry, to get a rum. bunch of rum, rum for the future tavern that doesn't exist. <laughs> so they sort of get together and go have some breakfast, chat about some stuff, and Alcott realizes, where's Eamon? Eamon's been up this whole time. He actually got up at a decent hour <laughs> and has been waiting for his hawk to return on the top of one of the towers. Not the main tower, but one of the towers in the fort and eventually doesn't come by the time that he was waiting for, and so he goes back down. He meets up with Alcott at the top of the tower after a request, and he and Eamon have a bit of a personal conversation about some of Alcott's history and Alcott's apprehension in the things that are going on, that might be going on in Magnamar with his father, and he requests that Eamon look into this half-moon stone thing that he was given and the scroll of stone shape because Alcott feels he's too close to this right now and maybe doesn't have the emotional capacity to deal with that right now. Um, then I don't remember if Irda did incredibly much. I didn't have a lot of time to do That's incredibly That's totally much. okay. We were all we busy, very obviously. Um, yeah, so, oh yes, we talked about the scrying spell and the mm -hmm. possibility of looking in on not only Ixen, but also Not possibly looking ship. in on your pirate ship um, once I learn that spell at the end of the current day we're on. Uh, and then Cade and Alcott go out into the fort and start putting together the base structure of, or at least laying out what it might look like, the Pickled Pirate Tavern. Uh, <laughs> And that is where we left off. All right, very good. Uh, so we're going to get started today. Oh, and Eamon yeah. went up to the schoolhouse at the very end. Right, Eamon yeah. at the schoolhouse, tapping on the window, looking for Tilia. Uh, Tilia was, the, of course, the uh, the teacher uh, that you encountered in Turtleback as you were rescuing children during the flood. Uh, well, rescuing some of the children oh, during the flood. Dang, <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, so we tried. We might have had some viewers <laughs> that got confused by your reference to feathers uh, and rum. Oh, yes. So if you're uh, if you're newer to the Rune Lord stream, uh, Captain Cade Cardinal here uh, is a very much a rum aficionado, uh, or others might call a drunkard. Um, <laughs> but uh, Cade loves rum, and uh, Alcott has uh, come upon a spell called Heavenly Rum, uh, which creates the most divine, both in flavor and in potency, rum, uh, which warms both the gullet and the soul. Uh, but it requires a very special component. Uh, the feather from a celestial being. Uh, how fortunate they have an Azamar <laughs> in the party. Aye, uh, who got uh, her wings? <laughs> for, for which reason, Kate asked if she had any friends that were molting. <laughs> 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 that was really great. That was good. Uh, all right, so uh, go around quickly, introduce your PCs, and we'll jump right into the action. Let's start with you, Eamon. I am Eamon, uh, half orc, magus. He is. Uh, constantly covered and you don't ever really see his face unless he gets hit by a frost giant in the <laughs> face um then he can't really do much about that um no. yeah he's uh he sent a letter into the east and he is waiting reply and uh whether or not he receives that reply will be very important to him mm -hmm. yep yep okay. and he did level up because we finally rested so mm. i need uh, level yeah. nine and points. i do okay some xp um, yes. I didn't send out your XP when I sent out their XP. They got XP and I did <laughs> <laughs> you, you wouldn't be ready for a level up anyway because of where you're at, so, but I'll, I'll get you that. You, yeah. You're not. You're probably about as close as I am to level 10 now. 
Well, I should be. Yeah. I, <laughs> All right, let's take Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> DM on the couch again tonight. Yeah. All the time here at Blue Box. I, I better be back to town. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Alcott. Uh, Alcott Devereaux, Wizard Extraordinaire, uh, level nine, so close to ten. Two MVPs and I'm there, guys. You got no. me. <laughs> <laughs> not baby. Ah, I'm not baby. Already. But I'm gonna try really hard to role play this Petition. session. Um, and um, really wants to get back to Magnamar. Like, there's a lot of things pulling Alcott back to Magnamar. His dad, the shield, and just returning the book that he has taken from. Like, there's a lot of things that Alcott needs to get back to Magnamar for. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to Cade. Huzzah! I'm Captain Cade Cardinal. I was a level 10, but he dropped me to a level 9. I think the brain injury is what dropped you to level yeah, 9. Yeah. Just waiting to get back to a level 10. Um, let's see. I'm in the midst of the pickled pirates, trying to get that up and running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to add a little more fun into Eamon's life. Mm -hmm. I love <laughs> rum, women, and gold. And they could change in that order at any time. <laughs> now, what, what would you say uh, to those that say you're not just trying to get Eamon to have a little fun, that you're trying to corrupt for Eamon? <laughs> Yeah. But I'm not corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> everything's, everything's right in the game. It says, it says good on my character. <laughs> <laughs> that's, but that's why, you know, Kate's always in the good. Deal. Yeah. We see the chaotic for sure, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, uh, and uh, last but not least. Hello, everyone. I am Irda Lianril. I am a level uh, 8 Skald, level 2 uh, Paladin. Uh, Azamar is uh, my family. Um, and um, I have established this shrine to Serenry in the fort, uh, as I said before. Um, I also am just kind of working on keeping everything going in the fort uh, as the rebuilding is taking place. I'm trying to uh, make, you know, oversee everything because these people are my, under my protection now. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I have going on. And okay. we haven't talked to Shalu apparently since we got back, so we should probably do that at some point too. <laughs> okay, so, a um, couple things. One, uh, we have a giveaway today on stream, and we haven't done one of these in a while. I thought we had given away the last, but we hadn't. We have one more. And given that we are in Rennick and we are uh, outside the soon to be pick um, uh, Fort Von Frost, sorry. Uh, outside the Pickled Pirate, we have one of the Ameko's Revenge flasks. Oh, huzzah! The, these oh, metal flasks um, with Ameko's Revenge, which is, of course, the name of Cade's ship. Uh, they have. A uh, blue box on the back. Well, of maybe them. I'll make new so ones that, with the pickled pirates. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, these flasks, these are cool. They're metal flasks. That, uh, the top unscrews. It's nice. It's a really cool flask, and we'll be giving this away today. And then, depending on our viewer count, uh, we may even have a second giveaway. So let's see how the day goes, <laughs> and let's kill the ambient music, and we will get started with episode probably 52 probably. of Rune like Lords. And. You are inside Fort Rennick. Uh, you've had five days of rest. Uh, as we pick up the action now, there has been a steady snowfall over the previous days. Uh, the, the mountainside covered with a hoary white frost and snow all over. Uh, the trees uh, have lost their leaves except those which are sort of the, the evergreen conifers that surround certain areas. The rocks themselves are covered with this beautiful white snow. It's a crystal clear blue sky uh, with a pale yellow sun this morning as uh, we have, we're gonna be starting with you out in the courtyard of Fort Von Frost and we're gonna begin with Alcott and with Cade who stand in front of uh, some timbers and we're gonna let Alcott describe what you're seeing uh, and then we'll kind of rotate back around to each of you. Thank you for the sub, Vecnon. And uh, let me kick off some ambient sounds. And we are ready with episode 52. Um, Alcott, as you stand <laughs> in the snow, uh, the bustle of life around Fort Von Frost, and I'll pull up the battle cam for everybody, the bustle of life around Fort Von Frost, the wall which was damaged, you can see has actually now been completely repaired, thanks in large part to the hard work of Gerg, uh, the hill giant who has befriended the party I his and life. the people, uh, <laughs> having had his life spared, has proved to be a 
<laughs> both a diligent and productive worker. <laughs> when he was asked to go fell trees, you literally saw him ripping 20-foot pines uh, from the ground and carrying them back to the fort. Um, he has ripped branches off and stacked lumber. He has carried huge pieces of uh, ore and stone and was critical in the rebuilding of the wall. So while there are still many areas of the fort which need repair, the essential uh, breach in the wall has been addressed. You stand beside uh, Cade as people are walking around and describe what Cade sees. So there's a, a pile of timbers off to the side, rather large pile of timbers, and Alcott just stamps his quarterstaff, pulls it into his left hand. He needs his right hand to focus on his magic as he casts. And so he sort of swishes and flicks his finger and points it at the, pat, the stack of timbers and says, Circulus. And it just slowly lifts off the ground, and he points it over toward uh, sort of this open area and says, All right, where are we putting things? So you literally see these huge timbers that Gerg has carried over. They start lifting themselves and moving as Alcott holds his hands up after speaking the word. They start stacking in the general shape of the, the, the prow of the ship. Oh, Alcott, you're such a wizardy fella. What are you doing with the wood? Uh, we're going to lay out the base of your tavern. You're going to build it? No, I'm not going to build it. I'm just going to lay it out so that Gerg can build it. Oh. He's not so good with blueprints, I'd imagine. Well, right here. All right. Where would you like the entrance? Directly underneath the nose of the bow, off to the side? How many rooms hmm. inside? How big will the kitchen be? Hey, so much! Coming at me here! <laughs> <laughs> You've got it all right in front of you, Kate. You just need to point my finger. There! <laughs> Just come up with a layout later. But. Yes, I'll come up with a layout later. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I help Cade point through and we lay out all of the pickled pirate right in front of us. Okay, and so you see this all kind of forming with uh, bits of timber uh, just laying out almost like a drawing uh, in the snow. Aye. Huzzah. Where is your, afraid, or your friend Ulsa? Isn't she going to help you? run this tavern. Aye, she was at that. Perhaps she could help Gurgs build it. I have to get her. Where is she? <laughs> All right. So you go off looking for her? Uh, I, yes. Okay. All right. So Cade walks off uh, looking for Ulsa. Mm -hmm. And as he does so, uh, let's go to you, Eamon. Eamon. So you did a few things um, uh, during the break. You... Uh, we're examining the items that you got from Alcott, mm -hmm. uh, and then you were also doing some identification of a couple of items that you've had, all right? So, hey, welcome, thanks for the follow, Rubik. So, first of all, let's talk about your identifications. Um, you are successful in identifying both the gem that you secured up in Hook Mountain, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a gem of spell storing. It can store one spell of up to fifth level uh, to be cast at a later date. Uh, the potion is a potion of fly. You are able to discern nothing further from your inspection of the ring beyond what Alcott had already sensed, that there is, there is a magic woven in this stone item, but it has a sense of incompleteness to it, like a sentence with several words pulled out of it. You cannot reconcile what its purpose is having just half of it. Uh, but go ahead and roll d20 for me. Natural 20. A nat 20? Wow. Okay. What a waste of a 20. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, as, you, as you look at the paper, um, something catches your eye. And you look down below where just this very simple note was written uh, to Alcott. And you see not something that was written on the paper, but rather an indention which looks like perhaps it was written on a page above the paper uh, or somehow uh, purposefully indented just slightly. When you hold it up to the light and look at the, at, the, uh, at the side of it, it's simply a number, the number seven. And that was on? The note that was written to Alcott by his father. That's, now, that's fine. Okay. I, I, think I, I actually do think I would have given it to you for okay. further inspection. Okay. 
Uh, I was initially thinking I wasn't going to give it to him, but it, it makes oh, sense. Oh, I thought I saw no, that. No, 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 you're okay. I, I probably did write that I did give it to yeah. him. In, in the moment, I just forgot. Oh, okay. So, sorry, out of character. Go. Last session, we talked about the seven sins. Did that come mm -hmm. from me and the wizard guy? The, Where did that come the from? The lady. It was the, the Mistress Yerba. Yeah. Yerba. Yerba. And the Thessalonians mm -hmm. and how that mm -hmm. relates. Mm -hmm. After not fondling her goodies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and question about the gem. Anyone can put a spell in it. How do you get the spell out? Yeah, so it's a simple co act of concentration. So it's so like a, even Kate could cast it. It's like a full round. No, you have to have arcane spell casting capability. So if I put teleport in that, Eamon could yes. cast teleport. Yes. Or Irda could cast yes. teleport. Well, no, have to be able to cast arcane, not divine spells. She's I, a bard, though, I am right? a bard. Oh, that's right. Yes, she's a bard. <laughs> and paladin, so I can do both. <laughs> yeah. She's cool like that. Um, okay, I just wanted to make that and clear because... And I got because... nothing. <laughs> you have fifth level spells? You, you, you got okay. lots of rum. So. <laughs> Third. That's as high as I go right now. All right. Cool. All right, now, Yerda, what were you doing? Interesting. Um, so <laughs> she's been working kind of with Shreed all throughout the week to kind of keep things organized and... Um, just doing regular check-ins to see how everybody is doing, and, um, uh, the, cause, okay, so, question, um, each of us has a room, correct? Correct. Okay. In her room, would she have a table? Yes. Okay, so, basically, then, um, if, if anybody came into her room, they would see, like, all the maps that she's collected from, um, that room a while ago, but all the maps that had the information about McMorian and mm -hmm. all that, they would all be laid out on her table, and she's like been, been making notes and things on them, kind of trying to study them, figure out kind of the relevance and where the hags had been and the stone giants right. and all that stuff. So throughout the week, it's been ma mainly just her trying to keep everything um, scheduled, but kind of studying those more um, to see okay. if she can glean anything else from them. And of course, um, you know, spent time in prayer um, mm -hmm. regularly. So, yeah. All right. Good. Um, Eamon, as you're tapping on the glass of the schoolhouse, uh, you do see Tilly as she turns, um, and again, as I read for in Discord, her auburn hair tussled around a blue dress. Um, she turns, her eyes go wide a moment. Eamon, uh, as she walks over, you see there's about a dozen students in the room of varying ages. Obviously, they can't, they don't have enough kids to distinguish, you know, grades in the way you would traditionally. So you've got, it looks like some that are as uh, young as maybe six winters and others that look like they're, you know, probably in their early teens. Um, as she walks over uh, to the window, she slides the glass up. What is it, Eamon? What can I do? I, I don't mean to interrupt if, if you're in the middle of something, but uh, I, I believe we're planning on going back to Magnamar, and I was wondering, I, I, I can't do much, but I would like to help the school if there's anything that I can do for you. Uh, she, she looks taken aback for a moment, and she says, well, uh, of course, I, we, could, we could use many things here. We have insufficient books. Uh, we do not have enough quills and parchment. Um, I have no uh, board upon which to write with my chalk. Um, there is uh, insufficient supplies even for food for these children. Um, they tire of the same things every single day. Whatever you can return from Magnamar with, we would be most grateful for. I will see what I can do. Um, it may not be much, but I will do as be the best I can. Okay. As you're talking, a couple of the kids, uh, they're, they're watching through the window. One of them snickers and leaves a, show us your teeth! <laughs> I heard you go like tusks or fangs or something, like a, like a, like a, like a boar. Like a boar. Maybe I do. Well, show us! Mm. I don't think you're ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So uh, you you do find uh, her, and uh, she uh, looks over at you, and she says, "What okay, aid? Good to see you. You 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 got the coin that's necessary for us to do the building, then." 
don't mean, know, do you? You don't, you don't <laughs> necessarily me. need it because Gergs will build it and I can make you rum. That's, I remember that was your starting plan. Let me see. How good of a craftsman is Gergs? Oh, I got gold. Oh! <laughs> well, what would it be? To, oh, see, what would the money be for? For the construction of the pickled pirate. Like, so it's all the things you need, everything Tables, from, okay. from the liquor to the table. So does she have a tally for me? Yeah, she gave oh. you. She gave. She's yes, a, you know, she, I, she I think I wrote that down. Yeah, she pulls out a a, a, a wrinkled parchment. But Thank that was you, for Shane. Building itself, five thousand. Uh, okay. And so she had. You'd already been told that it was going to take twelve thousand <gasps> gold to construct oh. the pickled pie. I already got to find it? more gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. Now, uh, that was, of course, assuming certain things in terms of lumber and labor. Uh, you do have the sense that Gergs is probably accelerating that process, uh, so it may not be that full 12000 by the time it's done, but yes, it's going to be a, you know, you've got, you got a lot to spend to construct a tavern. Uh, the libations alone from far and wide would be quite expensive. Oh, well, we've got plenty from Alcott. <laughs> <laughs> we only serve one drink. <laughs> it's a it's a one drink! Right here. <laughs> Um, for a while until we oh, make enough money and then... Two gold results. Thank you, Pat! <laughs> Please. <laughs> Much appreciated, my friend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you have the gold! All right, I got part of it. But Would 5,000 be sufficient? We can for sure get started with that, yes! All right. Well, do you know how, like, Gurg is going to... Does Gurg build intricate? I don't trust him to build the whole thing. Are you daft? You can't let a giant do that work. <laughs> well, that's what oh. Elgar said, and I'm a little worried. The, <laughs> the timber work, the framing. The framework. Oh. He can shove a tree <laughs> five feet in the ground. <laughs> okay, that, that, you, that, you, that. Amos, <laughs> Amos shouting across the courtyard at you because he hears this conversation happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, who do we got to build the pickle pirate so it's intricate? I got uh, some ideas for it. Uh, well, give me the gold. Oh, well, you're a bossy one. Uh, the laborers <laughs> don't work on a promise. You need the gold. There you go. Gold. Oops, I just added. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how Cade would do it. <laughs> yeah, that's consistent with Cade. Whoopsie. Let me take out 10,000. <laughs> You have 10,000 no, I added 5,000. So oh, like oh. <laughs> I was like, dang, you've been saving up. <laughs> no, I need right. to go find some. I mean, this is, a, this is a large sum of gold. So, you know, you're, you're pulling out, uh, you know, two or three really hefty sacks filled. Um, she starts <laughs> ferrying them back. And uh, without even a further word to you, see, she just goes bustling off um, and she's tapping various men that are carrying things around the fort and appear to be laborers. Um, she seems to be gathering men and she's flashing coin wherever she walks about. Don't flash it too much. <laughs> Careful with the flashing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. what's everyone else doing? Um, I would like to... Um, Dur so basically what I'm doing for the rest of this week is um, studying up on the Thessalonian book. I hope that by the end of five days I can learn the language. The entire language of Enough the Thessalonians? Enough to, to, to say I'll give the book back and finish it later. Um, so in five days, uh, with your intelligence... Keep in mind I am doing other things. You have facility with, with, uh, with languages, certainly. But yes, you are doing other things. Um, you know, you would have r rudimentary... Uh, sort of casual conversations, okay. you know, like the ability to do basic right, left, so then, in, out, up, down. Did I get an idea of how long she was willing for me to hold on to this book? She didn't give you a time. All right, then I'm not worried about it. Um, <laughs> Is this Yerba? Yeah. Oh, don't I mean, I, Yes, I want to get it back. For a reason. I want to get back to her as quick as I can, <laughs> but it's also a whole language I'm learning, and the book is massive, so. Um, I want to... Draw as lifelike a picture I can of my father. During Alcott's time at home, he had multiple random hobbies because that's what you do when you're a spoiled kid in a rich house. You just do things. Right. One of those things I mentioned to Eamon was bird watching. He did that with his mother. He picked up that hobby. Um, I, he, one of the other things he liked to do was sketch those birds. Right. 
um, while he was just sitting there, he would sketch them in as great a detail as he could do. I mean, he's in his mid to late 20s, so he hasn't been home in a while, but he's certainly been sketching. Um, I want to try and draw a lifelike picture of Alcott's father, and at some point I would like Cade to assist me in drawing a, as close to the detail he, that he can give me, a picture of whoever it is on the ship that you want me to scry on. Oh, Sully. <laughs> I have to draw it for you? That could be sick. No, no, no. I will, draw <laughs> I, I will be drawing it for you, Kate. Oh. You will just tell me what he looks Huzzah. like. Huzzah! Okay. All right. Uh, so as you're doing this, uh, you're doing your detailed drawing. So in terms of the book, uh, the way we'll handle this with the language is as you progress, uh, should you at any point be trying to communicate, decipher, read, I can just uh, reference the book. There, well, you can do that, or also if you don't have the book, based on however long you've had it, there'll be a role okay. you know, based on how much okay. you've learned from it. Um, the, uh, you know, there's still bustling activity all around the fort as the day continues to wane on. Uh, the sun is deceptive as it hangs high in the sky but gives little to no warmth. Chill wind blows, little flurries of snow bat about uh, the parapets of the fort. Uh, what else are you doing during the day? I would like to have an interaction with you at some point. Okay. I feel good. Yeah. Where, where would you be? Um, at this midday. Midday, uh, she would have had her... She would have had a midday meal and then probably return to her room to go back to studying. Knock on your door. Okay. Uh, come in. It's Alcott. Um, I, I have some questions for you, if you don't mind. All right, and uh, Erda's going to look up and you'll see like little bit smudges of like charcoal on her face from where she's been noting things and like lighting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Busy, I see. Uh, yes, I'm just trying to f perhaps figure out uh, more about um, what we're coming up against next with these uh, oh. others. You have a lot. And, uh, yes, I've been trying to notate kind of uh, what we've found, what we've learned um, here. So, Well, I did learn a couple things while I was in the archives mm -hmm. about the Thessalonians and yes. possible connections to the... Seven sins and some other <laughs> things going on, but it seems like you already have some of maybe that. I'm not sure. Um, we can compare notes later. Yes. Um, back a while ago, when we were up in the mountains, I had mentioned to you that... You had mentioned to me that Solomon had a brother. Yes, then you did. I would very much like to meet him. To bring yes. him the news of what has occurred to his brother. Mm -hmm. I, d uh, I don't... And I know that you said you didn't know really much of anything about him, mm -hmm. but... I just know that he is Solomon's brother. They would have the same last name, I imagine, and that is about what we know of him. Um, Lucretia had, had been taunting Solomon with information saying that she had had a intimate relationship with uh, Solomon's brother, but other than that, I do not remember him ever giving us a description or anything to inform us more of what, where he is, what he looks like. Seems like a bit of a dead end. I know. Perhaps the archives could give us information on him, possibly? Perhaps if... Citizens' uh, records? Did he live in Magnamar? I wish I had him more time to know him better. There wasn't really much time for discussing a lot of where we were from. I mean, his, his, he seemed to have, be a man of some level of nobility, I would say. Uh, maybe his name would come up in the records of That's the noble helpful. families. That's certainly helpful, and I should be able to get access to that. That would be my best guess, but his origins, I, I do not remember. I, I would just like to let his family know what has occurred. Yes, and that is important to me if we can find anything good. Uh, that's good to know. I know that you have siblings as well. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would like to know. Is that okay? Yes. Well, thank you. Why don't we compare notes? Uh, yes, um, so what I found, and she'll, she'll kind of, she has all the maps laid out that she had collected before mm -hmm. that you've seen, um, and she, you know, gestures to all of the various little notations that had been previously made, 
Um, and she, you know, you'll see on there, she's noted where the hags and the stone giants were in the mountains. And, mm -hmm. um, and then on another piece of parchment kind of off to the side, she has written down everything that she remembers about um, what they've learned about the Brother Seven and uh, the entire what they found in um, Sandpoint with the murders and um, how kind of trying to piece together how it's all connected. Mm -hmm. um, the Sahedron runes, what they found in Thistletop, mm -hmm. um, as far as the statues and that that uh, image, that silent image, or the image that had kept looping with the 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 man talking. Um, and just every little, every little detail that she could possibly remember that had anything to do with um, the Thessalonians and these brothers seven, she's kind of made a full notation out to trying to figure out possibly how it all comes together. The brothers seven. Mm hmm Can you give me a little bit more detail on specifics of them? Do we know anything about the individual people? Mm, we the do actions not. they've taken uh, with them? We all I have uh, I've learned so far. Uh, there was a letter that had been written to um, uh, uh, um, Aldern Foxglove. Uh, we found it in his uh, possessions in the um, Foxglove Manor in Sandpoint, um, and it had been written um, Zanisha, the the half snake, half woman creature that we found in Magnamar and Kate pushed off the clock tower. Um, <coughs> <laughs> we had, um, she had been the one who had written that note, and, and her name was on it, and she spoke of the Brother Seven, um, and, uh, at the time, I was not sure if it was perhaps some sort of, um, organization, or literal brothers, or what, uh, but everything has these, uh, these Thessalonian runes, these, the Sahedrin rune, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's on all of it. it. They mark it with the, the rune, so clearly that is the most significant thing. It is a string tying this web together. Yes, but where the web meets, that is the question. Yes, it, it seems that this, these runes and the number seven are rather important to these people. Yes. I would not doubt that the things we have seen occurring are an enactment of the seven sins in various ways. Right. Wrath, greed. I mean, you had seen people killed in the streets with these symbols marked on their chests. And those people were, um, they were greedy. They were ones who uh, used uh, or held gold or, um, and the, even with uh, Lucretia, the, the, her ship that was for Lust. intimate encounters, yes. Um, Wrath on and the people gambling of Turtleback and... Ferry. Yes. Needless killing. I think we are seeing a, a great darkness coming about, and we've only seen part of it. Yes, and it's it's very worrying. Your mention of what's his name, Mark Murian. Mark Murian, yes. Um, that he has been spoken of twice. Uh, yes, by Barl. Barl ends on this map here, and she'll point that out again. Mm -hmm. That where Mark Murian is mentioned on the on the side of the map. And he, I believe, might have the, been That mountain isn't Hook Mountain, though. It was mm -hmm. north of it, right? Yes. Because the Barl was sent to Hook Mountain by Mock Murian. Mm -hmm. I've, I've also written down the name Jorgen Heist. Maybe another yes. name that he is known by? Perhaps. And the death of these Turtleback Fairy people were feeding his purpose. Oh, it seems to be giving the, the these the runes that are marking on the body. They disappear with a flash when the person dies. So it seems as if the it, their, it takes their life and gives it, it to them. Yeah, for but then for what being purpose? who? Yes. Well, because Macmorian could just be another. He is enforcer if you, type. If you remember, the hags let us know about someone named the Lord of Ruin. That was their title. I right. don't know their name. Right. But the ancient empire of the Thessalonians, I believe there might be some Thessalonians still among us. Right. And that this Thessalonian is bringing about his own... I just... It's been... It's been so very long since the Thessalonian 
society existed Incredible. from what I understand. It, it is a marvel that they would be able to stay completely um, unknown and, and hidden in, in all of this time. There has to be some, some sign of them somewhere in all of history. We have seen multiple encounters with undead. Yes. Perhaps someone of great necromantic power has brought him back a to Thessalonian. Perhaps. Perhaps. And with the great power of a Thessalonian behind them, they could do a lot. And perhaps they are charging themselves with the death of these peoples. Because it took a lot of energy, I would imagine, to bring back a Thessalonian. And that comes back to the foxgloves again. That the, the lab that we found under the house it, with it, the lich symbols. It comes back and all to of the, Lemitar becoming a white. Yes, with all the the um, the cages that were marked with the Magnamar on the. That's that's where Ixen disappeared for the first this time. This lich that he is studying under, I believe, mm. could be a bigger. That could be Mokmurian. Do you think? I. I wouldn't put doubt on anything yet. Perhaps. We should speak to the others. We should. All right, we have a quick OOC. So, there's seven brothers, right? Mm-hmm. That's, well, that's at least what they're called. Okay. So we haven't, like, known that we've killed any brothers. We're, are we looking for seven brothers? I mean, we've, <laughs> we've killed two sisters. Okay, like, <laughs> I mean, we could, we could say that we bring you guys into the con Like, we could go down, find you guys, okay. and then bring you back up. Okay. All right, so we'll come to that. So, yeah, so you guys come back down. Uh, you find Cade bustling about behind the, uh, the Havling woman uh, that he has contracted to help him construct uh, his, his tavern. And Eamon is now down here with you as well. Uh, so you're all out front, uh, outside the tower. Uh, while you're doing that, a couple things. Yes, yeah, so the question came up earlier. This is the flask that's the giveaway. It is metal, uh, very cool screw top. Uh, we've given a couple of these away. A uh, blue box on the back, uh, Mako's Revenge. That is the name of Cade's pirate ship. Yar! And Huzzah. you can win a Mako's Revenge flask. Daka Flocka appears to already be uh, uh, laying claim to it. We shall see, <laughs> my friend. Uh, and then, yes, there were some people that were wondering about the poll. Uh, there was a pool that was opened at the beginning of the show. How many minutes it would be before Cade did the first very stupid thing uh, during the session that Cade typically does. So 43, I believe, was the guess. And, uh, what not, did I do that was stupid? I, 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 I'm not just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, Katie Nine Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're now outside the primary uh, tower structure, and just for our, the all of our audience and their viewing pleasure, uh, this is Fort Rannick. Fort Rannick, as rendered here, is of course <laughs> up against the mountains uh, in the north, and so you are looking at basically this fort, the back of it is right against the mountain structure. There is a river that runs uh, around the outside of it as well uh, on the front. And of course, this is not a sponsor of ours. Um, this is all from Miniature Building Authority. Uh, you can check their stuff out while they're not a sponsor. Um, they they uh, they were essentially sponsored by a lot of money from my wallet. Uh, so uh, these, they, they, but this is awesome stuff. It's heavy duty resin. Uh, I get nothing from shouting them out other than they have really really cool stuff. Uh, all right, so. Uh, the three of you are standing outside this main tower, uh, which is, of course, where most of the inhabitants of Fort Von Frost are now living. These are where your own rooms and accommodations are. I failed to point out to you that the original wooden structure, the palisade that had been constructed when you first arrived at what was then known as Fort Rannick, uh, has been uh, repurposed, uh, stone erected, and this has been turned into a blacksmithery. So this is where awesome. uh, the weapons and the armor are being created for the defenders of the fort. You notice most of them now are, in fact, well equipped. Uh, they have uh, armor, they have shields, uh, they have proper bows and swords, uh, very similar to what you see here. And then of course this is the schoolhouse uh, where Tilia teaches. You have the stables uh, over there as well. So you're now standing outside and uh, Eamon and Cade, as you guys were talking and uh, Cade was uh, nattering on about something that he was excited about with the pickled pirate, which could barely keep your attention and interest. Uh, you see uh, Irda and uh, Alcott come walking out. Would you both mind coming upstairs with us? I need to sure. grab something in the kitchen and I'll meet you upstairs, if that's all right. Food. Yeah. <laughs> Close. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna ask for a big pan filled with water. All right, uh, and so are you taking this to your room? 
I'm going to take it up to Irda's room. Okay. So in moments, uh, you are all gathered inside Irda's room. It's up on the third floor of the main tower. And uh, you do see as you walk in, it's the first time you've been in here this week, and you see she has a desk that is just littered with documents and parchment, and you see things that are set in different places. She's clearly been pouring over everything that has been gathered by the party in the uh, previous weeks as part of this process. Uh, you also see something very odd. Alcott is standing over a large uh, uh, sort of portable tub of water. That, also, that I did have my unseen servant carry up the stairs for me. I also, would, of course, not carry it. Of course. <laughs> As a note, even though, like, the table's completely covered and stuff, the rest of her room is very tidy. Like, she's she's very pristine yeah. about her, like, the way she keeps it. So, yes. Desk is... is of <laughs> course. Yeah, it's always neat. <laughs> Ira, would you like to... Um, what all we have discussed? Yes, so uh, Ida will turn to them and literally explain everything that she's just explained to Alcott, though Kate would know most of this already because Kate was there for most of it. But So she directs most of her uh, what she's saying to Eamon since he was not there for the vast majority of all of this. Um, and then she points out um, all of the... Um, the notations that she's added to the maps um, since the last time that we all looked at them together. At the repeated um, number seven, um, you'll notice Eamon kind of, he shifts, um, but he's not going to say anything. He just, he kind of shifts Do I as that? though something's going through his, his mind. Uh... Well, you said we notice it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty obvious. You see this shift happening. And by the way, can everybody hear all right? I know Eamon has a little bit quieter voice. Uh, let us know if you're having any trouble hearing him. Sit up and project. <laughs> <laughs> Eamon, do you have something you need to get off your chest? Um, perhaps later. I'll just lean in. Is this related to... Yes. Perhaps now is the time. If you're okay with that. I believe I'm all right. Okay. And Eamon will pull out the letter um, that a uh, Alcott gave him. And um, he's actually going to, you know, look at Alcott because this is really I important. I take an extremely <laughs> deep breath. <laughs> Towards you. And um, so this letter that uh, your father wrote to you, um, yes. I've examined it. And there's more here than first meets the eye. There is? Um, what have you found? If you look at this corner right here, there's a slight indention. You're right, there's a seven right there. Yes. And sevens have come up an awful I lot. I neglected to mention something to you two. Eamon and I have been discussing this. My father, I didn't even mention this to you, Eamon. Um, my father is missing. And you see Alcott like, like welling up emotionally. And, um, I am scared. When did he go missing, do you know? Weeks ago. He was apparently looking for me in Magnamar and came up with no luck and then was apparently taken off of the streets. Do, uh, do, do you think he's still in Magnamar for chance? I hope. That is why I am, um, that's why I've brought this pool of water up here. He's crying. Yes, I would like to look in on Ixen, and if I can, I would like to look in on my father, but I had Eamon look into these, which he left me. Apparently at the Stone of the Sea, my old teacher, he left them with, and it is a half stone, a scroll of stone shape, which I imagine is to fix the stone, although we have no clue how to fix it. You came up with nothing? No idea. It's, it's like an incomplete sentence. Yes, I felt something similar. May I see it for a moment? Please. Um, and she's just going to look at it and imagine she would see that it kind of looks like half a ring, like that mm -hmm. we had seen before. Right. My best thought would be we must find the other half and perhaps your father has the other half of this. Perhaps, although I don't know why he would keep it on him. Perhaps he was meaning to hide it somewhere for you to find later. He's certainly done that. And she'll hand it back to Alcott. And he left that note. Right. Which you have now seen that has the seven on it, which Sevens relates to well. the seven brothers and the seven sins. 
And now my family is a part of this. But how? Why? I would not... I might call my father greedy, but... I just call him that. <laughs> <laughs> not the time, Cade. <laughs> But he's, no, he's not. We do... Uh, is your ring only half there? Yes, it would seem. Is it, is, it, is it real gold? It's, no, it's stone. made of stone. It's, only it's about stone. that big. Uh, about a half circle. But what if it's only half? And it can attract you to the other half. So he left it because it would be attracting and you could find him. I like your Do thought, a magnety thing. But we have... Not found any arcane traces on it so far. Oh. And seeing that you're agreeing with that, I'm like, yeah, came to the same conclusion. Well, in other words, nothing magicy. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I like your talk, there. <laughs> then he's catching on. Sorry, I, f I forget sometimes. <laughs> the dictionary, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have brought this up here, and I take out the silver mirror on my back, and I set it in the pool of water, and this. For me to look in on, in theory, whoever we want. Oh! Although it becomes whoever? significantly more difficult if I am not aware of them. You can tell me about them, and I can try. Like your friend, or Ixon will be significantly easier, as I have physically seen him, and I have his blood. Right. But I only have a picture of your friend, and you've only told me a little bit about him. Sully. My father, I know intimately well and yeah better the best thing i have from him is this either this ring he gave me or this picture i've drawn we shall see all right who do we want to start with first Ixon or my father i don't want to sidetrack this with family business i'm trying not right. to put my own personal emotion <laughs> right. but since the seven has occurred but if he's missing is important don't you want to find him before he's dead yes bravely there's no guarantee that he'll be dead. Oh, there's no guarantee that he could be alive. Kate. Kate. Well, we've we've seen lots of people. Yes, but we need a new arm. And look, I lost two arms and a finger. We lost Solomon. Yeah. It's a. Uh, we have to be honest. I'm not going to lose my father. Too. They get in the bowl. <laughs> this is him first. His father first. Right. Yes. Well, thank you for caring, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to, to take the picture and float it on the top of the surface of the water and place the ring off of my finger into the water. And I'm going to trace my fingers around the edge of the surface of the water, or of the, of the, the, the bowl, and right. say, conspectu, and just sort of plunge my face, eyes wide open, into the water. As you see, uh, Ixen plunge his face Ixen. into the Ixen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You've been aiming in the secret. Uh, as, he, as he plunges no, in. No, wait, they weren't too soon, uh, John. Don't reveal it. Too soon, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, you, you see there is a, uh, a quick flash of uh, yellow and blue light uh, that moves through the water. Uh, the... There's normally a will save associated with this. We're not going to do a will save. I want you to make a spellcraft check for the moment. Oh, please. okay. I'm just going to eat. Our cave gets an idea for the pickled pirate from this episode. <laughs> Roll for drowning. <laughs> Roll for drowning. Uh, don't worry, I have a really good modifier. Type exclamation I point flask in the chat. Not a one. <laughs> you say that every time. Um, that is a... 23. A 23. Okay. <sighs> Alcott. As you concentrate and you feel the far sight of your arcane, arcane scrying reaching out, there is something amiss. Uh, it's like looking into complete darkness. And yet with your spellcraft and your innate arcane knowledge, you see what almost would be like a trail of vapor, uh, perhaps the smoke of a torch that has passed and left a lingering haze 
in the corridor behind it. And in an instant, you know with certainty that your father is dead and recently so. As in, perhaps within the last day, that you sense this vapor trail of his presence in your scrying. And just as soon, it vanishes and all goes silent. You see him just sort of lift his head from the bowl and just sort of sit there staring into the mirror. And then he just slams his fist next to the bowl and walks out of the room. Dunk! I'll be a little careful with that unless I shake everything off the table. You don't know, you don't see what he sees. You don't know this. You just see Ixen as he comes up out of the water. <gasps> out of the oh, alcohol as he comes up out of the water. <laughs> and he, he slams his fist down, uh, water dripping over his robes, and he stalks out, just leaving uh, the, the vat to undulate with the force of his face being pulled out of the water. Can I do a sense motive? Like to figure out what why he reacted that way, perhaps best guess. Uh, well, let's see. I mean, go, I'm gonna or? say you wouldn't even need to do that. You just you know clearly he didn't like what he saw, mm -hmm. but to know whether he saw you knew he was looking for his father, yeah, yes. whether he saw his father in trouble, whether mm -hmm. he saw his father dead, whether he saw his father doing something right. evil or wrong. You don't you right, don't know. So it, then it, as soon as he stalks out, you're just gonna um, go after him. The water trail leads up to the top of the tower. All right, Irda goes stalking out. Cade, Eamon, what are you doing? I'm following Irda. Cade? I want to look into the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I can see. Uh, you see, you see the picture. I like water. <laughs> of, you see the picture of Alcott's father, which was drawn with remarkable detail, uh, is now sodden. Where's and, the ring? And is slowly floating toward the bottom. It's, it's sitting in the bowl as well, I didn't know. Oh. Yeah. So I stick my head in there just to see if I can see anything. I rub my head around. <laughs> <laughs> you rub your head around. Uh, and you come up. Remarkably, you're wet. Uh, but not, nothing further. Uh, all right, so the thing... And I, I pick up the ring. Okay. Uh, the... I'm very curious about the ring. Uh, and this is the this is the half ring. It, correct? It's just no. Oh. This is my signet ring. Oh, your signet ring. Gotcha. Oh, okay, yeah. it's my, not, my it's family not crest. the. No. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so you now have uh, the ring with the Alcott family uh, signet, which includes the finch and the grapevine ah, on the on. field of blue and gold. <laughs> um, and uh, he's got pretty slender fingers, so you actually have to put it on your pinky for it to fit on your hand. Uh, but in moments, you do have it upon <coughs> your hand. Uh, it's Cade's Saturday bath. <laughs> uh, all right. And so, uh, let's move you to the top of the tower. And uh, we would have, of course, up here, the wind, uh, as is typical atop the towers of Fort mm -hmm. Von Frost. Uh, it carries a bitter chill uh, this morning. It's actually uh, slightly afternoon now. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna switch to the battle cam. Pull this over here. All right. So we have uh, Alcott and we have Irda and Eamon all atop the tower. Uh, you see the shrine that Irda had also sitting atop the tower. I head up there after nothing happens all right. with the bath. All right. You just <laughs> see me over one of the battlements, both my arms off to the sides, just. <sighs> is just going to kind of come up quietly next to him. And she'll look at him. Just shake my head now. I'm sorry. We were in... We were in Magnema while he was still alive. He couldn't have known. If only I were braver. You seem plenty, plenty brave to me, Alcott. You don't know me all that well. It's true, but I like to give you the benefit of the doubt. I run from my problems, Ida. Mm. Do you know why I'm not at my house? Why? Drinking wine and Tell reading me. spells. Tell me. I may have mentioned it to you before, but I have siblings. 
I had a brother, older, Roderick, the kindest man I ever knew, gentle soul. He was the more physical of the two of us, older, a couple of years, and favored by my father. For obvious reasons, he would be taking over the family business. Eventually helping to lead the town of Sandpoint and growing the region. He was important. I was the second born. I got to do what I wanted to do. Loved by my mother, taken care of, pampered even compared to my brother. But still, I knew what was going on. My brother loved it. He wanted to take over. And so he was sent into a knighthood when he was of age to help learn the government of the town of Sandpoint in the greater region of Magnamar, and to eventually become part of the politics of it all. I left to go to Magnamar, went to school to learn wizardry. In the eyes of my father, a waste of time. But my mother didn't think so. I took to reading oh, at a I young age. So. Thank you, Kate. Just because he's constructing your tavern. And he makes it really wrong. <laughs> and Very important fella. It was near the end of my schooling that I got a letter from my mother. We, I wrote to my brother often, but I didn't really very often hear back. I heard from my mother. I eventually heard from my younger sister once she learned how to read and write. But my mother told me, do not dally in Magnamar once I'm done with my schooling to come back. And it was there that I learned the unfortunate news that he died during his knighthood. We did not know why. At least in the moment, I wasn't told. And my father and I got into an argument, a rather serious one, about the now nature of my role in the family. Because, of course, my father is concerned about the business first. He loves us. Don't get me wrong. I loved him dearly. We didn't leave on the best of terms, and I am so very sad that the last moment memory I have of my father is anger. So I left. And I took the sword that my brother wielded into the shield with the thought that one day I would wield it too, and I would prove that I could take over the family business could defend myself and our family. It seemed that I am the head of the Devereaux family. And all I have is paper, the last words of my father, telling me not to search for him and apologizing. And he just breaks down into tears and slumps down to the ground. You hear his sword sort of clank as it's very big. The wind whips fiercely, rustling Alcott's cloak as he slumps to the ground. And you see his shoulders racking with sobs as tears flow down his cheeks. Here, Dad, will just sit next to him. I think, I think the nature of family in this world is a very complicated thing. And uh, I speak from experience. But my father loved you, and he knew you, you loved him too. That's good enough to remember. So what will we do now? We. We become the best people that we can be. And we do the best we can do to help those that cannot help themselves. And if you do not run from your problems, you face them. You're right. And I will be by your side. I am not sure if you all agree with this, but I wish to kill Ixon. I'm good with that. <laughs> 
Huzzah. Uh, or, but I know who I want to get. <laughs> ah, hush, right. I want to get the Lord Mayor of Magnamar. I got to kill all that dude. And we'll kill it in food. Uh, we'll kill that land lover. <laughs> as, as, you, as you say, you, she, she shushed him up, uh, but Ray is now perched atop the side of Cade's shoulder, and you see he's pointing his finger at you. I very quickly cast Comprehend Languages. Um, as you cast it, uh, the, the essence of his sentiment has already passed, and now what you're getting is a string of curses in Goblin. Uh, it, it appears to be calling into questioning your parentage, particularly on your mother's side. <laughs> Ray, Ixon is not good. Just because he made you doesn't make him nice. You not kill Ixon! Ixon! Friend! Uh oh. Ixon is not my friend. And if that is the case, you don't have to be my friend either. Wait, do I understand what you You don't saying? have pickles anyway! He says he doesn't have pickles right now, and he's sad about it. No, he said you don't have pickles <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. He's not translating <laughs> oh, it. Oh, okay, gotcha, 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 yeah. I think we need to go back downstairs and do some more scrying, but... Yeah, I have Irida's mic up as loud as I can go. She's actually speaking really quietly in the room right now as part of the role play, but we'll have her uh, be just a little bit louder. Move the mic closer. Makes sense. So I lean into Eamon. Well, I got chastised for saying your dad might be I'm whispering. Oh, his dad <laughs> might be dead. Stay to but I was a little <laughs> right. You know, people don't like the truth around these parts, but I tell you, he ended up being dead. Kid. Sometimes being right needs to stay in your own mind. Oh, Some things I don't wish. need to be said. Eh. Some things people need to come to on their own. Well, he did end up being dead. He did end up being dead. Yes, he did. So now, who, who's at fault? I believe that's what we're going to try to find out. That's right. Well, let's go back to that bowl. Oh, Elkatz, uh, here's your ring. <laughs> it's a nice one. You see, your family signet is perched <laughs> atop Cade's pinky. <laughs> Hold on to that for now. Uh, I will do that. <laughs> um, just let me work through this. Please. Just remember, your past is in your past. You can't change it. Learn from it. Be better by it. So Honor that, it. Yes. Huzzah, Eamon. And Eamon will acknowledge that he needs some time and We'll go downstairs. Okay, Eamon turns and walks back down the stairs. Uh, Cade curls the signet ring back up into his fist. Um, you still feel Ray glowering on your shoulder. You stay up here or do you head down? Yeah. I'll go down. Okay. Before Irda goes down. Speak up just a bit. Uh, before Irda goes down, um, she's going to look at uh, Alcott and say, um, Wait a second. Just a moment. Before I go, I want to let them descend because there's something I want to talk to you about. That, and so she'll wait long enough that she logically would think that Cade, um, Eamon, and um, Ray are out of earshot. Okay, I'll well, see so you wait a few moments until they have descended. Uh, and would certainly be out of earshot. You can hear their footsteps heading down the stone stairwells of the spire of Fort Von Frost until it is just you and Alcott alone atop the tower. I, um, I thought on what you had mentioned the other day about the ray, and I am concerned about his continued presence with us. 
His loyalty to Ixin could be a very, very dangerous thing. I haven't doubted that since we met him. He was just cute. Kate likes him. He was... He had helped us in the past, but I am starting to grow very concerned. And I don't want to hurt him. But I... I don't want to lose anybody else to Ixen. Ixen was in Magnamar when my father was taken. Yes. I cannot help but find a correlation. He's been watching us, and I do not know how. I don't know if it's this, and she gestures at the, the mark that he left on her, her neck, or if it's Ray, or if it's... A mix of all of it. I do not doubt. But... Quick OOC, sorry to interrupt, but thank you, Greyhawk Tales, for yes. the raid. Yes. Uh, we appreciate that. A party of 19, outstanding. Raid. Thank you very much. It's so rare that we get raids on Sunday yeah. afternoon, so it is definitely appreciated. And uh, if you are just joining us from Greyhawk Tales, thanks for popping in. Hit that follow button. We'd love to have you uh, give us a follow. And for all of our Blue Box fans, uh, make sure you should show some love back to the folks over at Greyhawk Tales. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and continue, please. Um, but whatever it is, I, I, I do not... I do not feel comfortable with Ray traveling with us, and I do not com feel comfortable leaving him here because I do not want, I do not want anything to fall on these people. We can defend ourselves; they cannot. Not, not, not against Ixin. Not against anything that Ixin could be tied to. Not that lich that he is is working under, who we have encountered before. The the more you go on with it, you see the more Alcott is just like visibly shaking. And I, I, I don't. I, I am worried. What do we do? I don't know. Oh, oh, see. Oh, wait. I don't, I, I, I don't know. So, oh, see. Yes. I was going to talk to Eamon when we came down about Ray, and it has nothing to do with what she said. No, so. okay. All right, that's fine. So we'll, we'll cut to that. And by the way, I forgot to mention for all the folks that just came over from Greyhawk Tales, we are having a giveaway today. Uh, this flask, this metal flask, uh, blue box on the back, a Mako's Revenge. Uh, that is the ship of one Captain Cade Cardinal. Hey! Captain Cade Cardinal. Uh, and this is a metal flask with a screw top. It's really cool. And, and you this, must fill it with your own rum. Uh, this way, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come filled with rum. Celestial uh, feather. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're at 65 viewers, which is uh, pretty good for where we normally are on Sundays. We normally wind up around this spot here. Uh, but if we get over 70 today, I will have a second giveaway. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Eamon, uh, you are downstairs with... With uh, Cade, are you going to his room, your room, or where have you gone? Uh, I was to going the, to my room. Oh uh, well. Right. He, he, Cade tries okay. to get you to go outside with him. Come on, Eamon. I want to check on 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 the pickle pirate. Cade, I'm going to be frank right now. I don't care about the pickled pirate. Well, you should. I don't. You should. <laughs> I don't. Well, you should. <laughs> I'll go to my room. I'll open it. Oh, I'll shut the Eamon, door. Hold on. Hold on. I have. Stops. I put my foot in the door. Oh, that's a good way to look. <laughs> the door closes on Cade's foot. I had a, I had a thought go through my head, and I, I need to ask you a question. It was a, it was a fleeting thought, but I, I, I need, I need to ask you. The point. What about this guy? What about? Speak up. What about this guy on my shoulder? Right. He points toward Ray. I point toward Ray. What do you think? Ixon's looking at us through him. I'm scared. Like, I think, I think I feel Ixon. You keep saying Ixon's name and you see oh. Ray is like... I'm trying to out. whisper. He's yeah. trying to figure out, well, yeah, but he's right on your shoulder. I'm so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, on the side of my mouth. Here was. Cade, Let's play your perhaps voice. we could discuss this... Let's find out, God. This evening... Over the given, given um, Ray's love of rum, we may mm. be able to speak in private, if you understand what I'm saying. You mean, get drunk? Yeah. Hey, Ray, would you like some, some rum? I give him a whole capful. All right, you pull a capful of your rum. 
uh, Ray was trying to listen in on your conversation, but as you hand it across, his tiny little hands grab the cap. He looks at you with a bit of suspicion. Drink up! Me hearties, drink up! But then he looks down at the rum, and uh, his his greed for the rum overcomes his suspicion. And, uh, oh, he that's talks right, little back, buddy, that's uh, right. In one chug. All right, we're going to come back uh, to you two <laughs> up atop the tower uh, as they are... Uh, they're getting his if, his little familiar <laughs> friend drunk. So, and so Alcott, drunk. <laughs> Alcott then says, Ray is a living being. He's right. intelligent, created by an evil man, but he's, like I said, cute. I just... I don't think he is evil. For all I know, I, I, I could, I could try detecting evil on him to see. I think that is a good for first step. I think that is important to discover, and that is the thing that I will be doing as soon as I am close enough to him to do it. Why don't we go back downstairs? And if you don't mind my asking, mm. I haven't been much of one for the gods. Yes. But seeing you and the incredible power given to you by them can't help but understand the fact that I, I would like to do some sort of ceremony. For your father? Yes. Before the night is up. Of course. I think it would help me with some closure. Do you, um... Do you have any particular tradition in your family? I know it varies from place to place. That is a, that's a good question. Is there any traditional, like, Varesian burial ritual or anything, or is it just put them in the ground? Oh, no, the no, as I said, there, you know, there are different, uh, much like we just talked about in our other campaign. Yes, I am burying uh, characters and PCs and NPCs in all my campaigns. Uh, you know, it varies by region. Uh, you do know, particularly for your family, having now for two generations uh, tilled the soil uh, of Regia outside of Sandpoint along those rocky hillsides to create the grapes, which are the Devereaux family uh, grapes, which create the beautiful wines uh, that there is a respect for the earth and returning all things to it. So, burying under a pile of rocks. Um, you don't have his body. Right. But a small pile of stones, I think, would do. As you're talking, um, almost like an, like an after effect, like when you look at the sun or a bright light and you close your eyes and you can still see that image on the back of your eyelids, while you're speaking of your father and thinking, there's a flash of what must have been an echo that you sense in that vapor trail of his presence. You felt incredible, unendurable, unimaginable pain screaming through every nerve of his body in his final moments. I just fall to my knee right there in front of you. <laughs> And she'll immediately, are you all right? You, you, you saw, like, it was, it was involuntary. His face winced and clinched up like a, like a stabbing pain through his head, and he dropped to his knees. Some after effects of that scry? What happened? You look to be in great pain. I believe my father was tortured to death. I think we have to go back to Sandpoint. My family could be in great danger. There could be something that maybe they think my mother knows. And anyone lays a finger on her. We can go as soon as you're ready, if, if... We should go downstairs, scry on X, and get ready to leave tomorrow. All right. There is one thing I would like to do before... Um, That's all right. But I will join you um, back in my room. I, just, I need a few minutes. All right. And I go downstairs back to the pool. Is Cade the only one in that room now at that point? Well, no. So actually, as you both go walking back down, I'm not. 
down yet. Oh, you're staying up I'm there? Staying okay, up for all right, well, we'll come back to you in a moment. As you walk down, you actually uh, go down a couple of flights. Since there's five floors in this tower. You get down to the third floor where your rooms are, and you see Cade. Uh, he's standing outside of Eamon's room with his foot in the door. And it, right as you walk in, you see that uh, Ray stands atop Cade's shoulder. Thomas, Ray stands atop Cade's shoulder, and he's holding an empty <laughs> cap off of a rum flask, and he's kind of swaying a bit atop Cade's shoulder. He's smart, actually. <laughs> good idea. Kate. Hey, thank you. Sometimes I do have a good idea. Where did Eamon go? You had a good idea. Oh. You hear Eamon's voice from inside the room. <laughs> there he is. Noticing that he's still just swaying, but he's up. By looking I give him a little more. Perhaps, here. Some, perhaps <laughs> one more. There you go, little buddy. As he turns, he, 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 he's, he's kinda, he sees Alcott. As you come walking down, he... He, he squints balefully at you. Pick up, Harvey. He quaffs back the rest of it. There, that's it. That's a, that's a, that's a goblin. And he makes an obscene goblin gesture towards you. I'm getting him nice and drunk. Good. Why don't you leave him downstairs for a bit? Maybe with the rest of that bottle? I can get you more tomorrow. Oh. Funk. <laughs> Ray hits. Ray falls off the shoulder and falls Never to the ground. Mind. <laughs> passing out. Get that out of the system, I suppose. He's good and drunk. <laughs> so, Cade, to be frank, I don't trust him. I'm not going to say that with him in front of us because I don't know how much he understands. He's questioning who created him, who God is. He's coming to the conclusion that Ixen is his god. Oh, that and can't it, be a good thing. No. But I was asking him, can Ixen see through Ray? It is entirely possible, Cade. Well, we can't have him with us. Well, we at the very least know that Ixen has been able to track Yeda or something. But yes. What if he's using He's also a liability. Little buddy on the ground. Entirely possible. Maybe the I mean, I do not there. have good luck with goblins, I'm telling you. We'll figure that out. But it's good for now that at the very least he is here. Can you go put him in your room, close the door, and just leave him so that even if his ears are working while he's unconscious, Ixon can't hear through them. Pick him up. Take him to my room. Thank you. All right, so you pick you pick Kate or uh, uh, Ray up. Uh, his he's like a absolutely limp, like he's dead in your hand. Uh, is his head is lolled over, his little green tongue is dangling out, and he's drooling on himself. <laughs> you take him back to your room. You deposit him. I'll cut real quickly. Um, I am uh, popped in a note here. We're going to do the flask giveaway right after the break. With break is coming up, so right when we get back from break, we'll do that. Type exclamation, exclamation point flask, and the reason we're doing that is I'm going to go ahead and do a second giveaway today as a thank you to the Greyhawk Tales team that gave us a raid, but then also uh, because it is uh, our sponsor, Art of Mike Disney is on with us today, and he's been active Ooh. in chat. So we're going to give away one of these beautiful Hello. overboard prints uh, signed by Mike Disney. We'll talk more about this after the break. It's called an overboard. Uh, yeah, this is the <laughs> overboard. Uh, this <laughs> is legendary on now, created on stream spontaneously by the super talented Mike Disney. Uh, this is now uh, part of the Reaper Bones newest Kickstarter, and this thing is already becoming legend. So we're going to give away one of these prints uh, later today. We'll problem. give away the flask right after the break. So type exclamation point too. flask. All right. <laughs> You're all standing around now back in the hallway. Eamon's door is open. What are you doing? I'm up top. You're just oh, that's right. You're just still up top. So what are you guys doing? Um, Alcott, are, are you okay? I'll be all right. N know this. One other thing that came to my mind as we came down here is in the past, it seems that you've fought, you've faced your problems on your own. <clears throat> you have us now. You have me. I will be there. Thank you. 
in a... When you live in a very big house, you don't very often see other members of your family who more often see the servants. <laughs> I've never lived in a big house. But I know what alone is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cade, I would like my ring back. Oh, it's a very nice ring. Thank you. You pull it off his pinky. Nice. And I am uh, sorry for your loss. And I hope to help you avenge his death. That we shall do. Um, Anything you need. After some recent knowledge that I was just given by the after effects of my scrying on my father, I have learned that maybe my still hopefully living family are possibly in danger as well. My father was tortured before he was killed. And that, that sound you, uh, that sentence you see aim intense. And there's a slight low rumble to his breath of distinct orcish kind of <laughs> all right we're going to switch to irda irda uh you are atop the tower wall all by yourself now uh just beside the shrine uh yep. that you erected for seren ray irda is going to move over to the shrine and she's going to light some incense and she's going to kneel I am sending up this prayer right now for our oh God's Father. Um, he died recently, and I just I wanted to ask you to make sure that his soul finds its way where it needs to go. Okat oh loved his father very much, and I could tell that his father loved him too, so. Help him find peace and rest. If you can. Amen. And she will get up and go jo jo join the others. Your prayer is um, peaceful to your own heart, but. You know, the only sound or reply you hear is the chill whisper of the wind uh, as it ruffles through your hair and carries snow flurries all across the now uh, beginning to slow activities of Fort Von Frost as the afternoon sun hangs lower in the sky. We go back inside to, oh what did I miss? Is, is there, is new there fan, fan art? <laughs> oh, is there new fan art? Okay, uh, this is a good time to mention our Discord. Uh, let's go ahead and pop our Discord creds in the chat. Uh, we have a very active Discord and uh, we have a lot of very talented uh, people. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I'll pull this up uh, so everybody can see it here in a second as well. Uh, but let's go oh, ahead man. and let's go to uh, back inside now. And uh, you are all standing. Have you gone back to Alcott's room or Irda's uh, we're, room? We're in Irda's room with the all tub right. of water. All right, so you're back in Irda's room with the tub of water. Uh, now, and Irda comes walking in. So the entire party now is back in her room. And uh, you see Irda as you walk in. There is no sign of Ray, uh, but you do see Alcott, Eamon, and Cade uh, all standing around the tub of water again. We have dealt with Ray. Don't worry, he's alive. Ray's yeah, a little drunk. <laughs> he's up in Cade's room, passed out. Probably for the best if we're going to proceed. <laughs> Evidently, it was um, Eamon's idea. Well, he's mm. very clever, I'm not surprised. Uh, Ray. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, shall we? Yes. Okay. All uh, right. What's next? We're going to try and find Dixon. Oh. Don't worry. We'll Should get we to your Ray? ship eventually. No. I have oh. Dixon's blood. Oh. 
So Pat 66, Alcott's ring was only necessary for the scrying on his father, you know, as an heirloom of the Devereux family. Uh, it is not in and of itself possessing of any magic. Nah. I, uh, and you can see the great artwork by Pat Draws here. Uh, this is Cade. Uh, can you read that for us in Cade's voice, please? Oh, I paid how much for me tavern? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so inside the room now, all standing around the tub, what are you doing? I take out the parchment with my father's drawing on it, and I want to sort of hang it over something to dry if I can. Or? Yeah, and you, as you do so, you, you see it's sopping wet. Some of the pencil uh, has sort of smeared a bit, but you are able to take the parchment and hang it over the edge of your desk, or her desk, rather. Um, and then I will take out the small vial that I had, and I will drop one drop of Ixen's blood into the water. Um. All right, hey bit of black ichor comes from the vial and drops into the water, you notice it doesn't disperse in the way normal blood would. It's like a black globule. It's, it's hydrophobic. That, that, that kind of sits on the surface of the water. Before we do this, is, a, is there a way perhaps that we can, just in case something goes wrong with this cry spell? Protect me. Protect you, protect our location, hide where we are in case he's able to use the scry to see us. Oh, I don't doubt that he knows we're here. Um, I have recently learned how to set up an alarm on the outside of the room, but I'm not sure how much that will help. Mm. All right, well. Um, we can try and we will see what happens. Yes. And you all will be here to take care of me in case I fall on the ground and I'm Die. hurting very bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dying today, Kate. <laughs> I won't let that happen. You're too important. Okay. All right. Um, I am going to do the same <gasps> thing. I circle the tub, and I'm doing it much more slowly and... and Emphatically this time, and and I say the word conspectu. <gasps> what him? Hold on. As you're about to say the word, Cade. Hey! I had another thought fleet through my head. What could Ixen possess you if you do this? Very little. Come inside you. Very few spells can pass through a scry. It is not physically me there. It is simply an eye that I am ah. creating. Well, that Ixen is a trickery fella. The most I could attempt to do is cast a message through the scry, and there is only, only a small percentage chance that it even works. If Irda were doing this, she could detect evil and good, or some other things through. I could possibly even detect magic through. We'll see when I get there. Good luck. All right. And then I... <laughs> put my face in. He puts his face in. Uh, he utters... The, the word again, as he does so, uh, you see those same familiar lights shining underneath the water, but then uh, the lights in the room seem to grow dim, as though there is something draining the light from the room. Everything around you grows darker and darker. As your head is beneath Alcott, you do, it takes a moment, you're disoriented, but then you see, it's like you're looking down through a lens and you recognize Ixen. You see a black robe pulled around his shoulders, his hair now gone a stark white. He sits in front of an ebony desk. About this desk, you see there are several vials and potions. Uh, you see what look to be dolls or figurines laid about as well, uh, various implements of arcane arts. But what strikes you the most is you see feathers laid out in neat order as he's leaning over the desk, and you instantly recognize them as Irda's feathers. You sense there is a figure behind Ixen off to the left just out of your field of vision, uh, you see the swishing of a black robe, and then a tendril touches your mind. 
Ixon's eyes shoot up toward the ceiling, and you know he has sensed your scrying. As he looks up at you, you see the further degradation of his visage, uh, for he is haunting in his sight, uh, his eyes black with pupils of red. As he looks up, you feel him trying to reach back through the scrying connection. I'll just... And we'll pause right there as we go to break. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll be back from break in just a couple of moments. Uh, thanks, everybody that's joined us today. We shall see <laughs> what happens after the break. Uh, to our friend, Alcott. Uh, now, we do have uh, the giveaway after the break. is going to be this beautiful Ameko's Revenge flask from Blue Box. Type exclamation point flask in the chat. And then at the end of our night, we're going to have this beautiful Mike Disney uh, oh overgourd print, and we'll talk more about that after the break when we do the giveaway. Uh, we'll also do a quick introduction to our players again, for those of you that are new to the stream. Yeah. Uh, but before we go to break, we have one question for you. If you're watching today and you haven't followed, or if you're a follower and your sub has expired and you have not resubbed, we have one question for you. What are you doing? Come on, give us a follow. Uh, help us as we're growing here at Blue Box and getting ready for GaryCon coming up in just a few, two weeks, 11 days, 11 days, GaryCon. It's going to be epic. Don't miss it. Blue Box, we'll be right back. And always, we will leave our mics hot during yep. break uh, so you can chat with our players. Sean's open sign up game has one spot left. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. So there is one open spot left. Uh, I got a message earlier. Uh, someone mentioned that they couldn't sign up yet because they had a uh, they had an ethereal ticket, but they couldn't. They had to wait. I don't know something. So if you're oh, having yeah. any trouble, let us know. Uh, but there should be one spot open. And I'm sorry, I haven't even promoted that because I didn't even realize it was already open. So, yeah. so sorry, everybody, if I didn't let you know. But you can jump in there now and join the Blue Box Open One Shot. And forgive me for not properly promoting that. So question before we um, actually get into any encounters today um when should i <laughs> roll for hit points oh yeah okay we'll do that right when we get back from just break. in case <laughs> you know for funsies for, for fun <laughs> uh. gotcha that makes sense jay thank you gary con not virtual gary con ethereal gary con not nothing Man. Oops. Shit job. Okay. Starting to get heavy. Right. Oof. Always worried about scrying is the yeah <laughs> tricky thing, and knowing Ixen. Right, and the fact that he's got a lich behind him now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, what you, it's just what you want, you know. Yeah. Ixen, who was already a little, a little questionable. <laughs> Unstable. <laughs> there you go. Get Ixen, I, I mean, obviously for real life purposes, you know, his story progressed in that direction, but it was interesting that he, uh, um, I was kind of thinking he kind of had the same, a, a, a sort of the same storyline as, as Grog from Critical Role oh, yeah. with the yeah. sword, and I yeah. was like, oh, this is this is crazy. And then when he had to leave, I was like, 
Oh, I would have liked to see where that would, was going to go, you know, Talking if he was, swords. you know. But it's still, it's interesting. It's amazing how many weapons will talk to you in D&D. &D. <laughs> Wait, who are you talking about? Um, Ixen, and how he was, oh. he was kind of starting to go down that, that the grog path. a little bit. And then, uh, it's funny, when yeah. I made Alcott, he was inspired by Scanlan. He was inspired by, um, oh, who is Sam's second character? I forget the name of it. Oh, 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 um, oh, oh. oh he always heck? called Vex Little Elf Girl. Yes. Um, <laughs> what the heck? Uh, 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 he shortened his name. Yeah. Um, why am I blanking on this? Terry and Darrington. Yes, Terry and Darrington. Terry. Terry. And. Uh, Percy, like all three of those are kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can see the. But as, as, especially because at one point Scanlan cast um, Bigby's hand mm -hmm. to grab the platinum great sword mm -hmm. and shoved it into an enemy, and that is literally the image I have of using my sword and throwing it. Like that's yeah. what I wanted was a mage who's just a mage with a stupidly big sword. <laughs> <on his back. laughs> like that's what I started with. That was my mental image. And then I made Alcott off of that. Your secret is safe with my indifference. Your, is my your clock is going down by two seconds at a time. Is it? It is, it was. I just saw it go 59, 57, 55. But no. it like it would skip a second when it would do it. Maybe it might just be my connection. Oh, I'm, st I'm still no, at a it minute. Is doing it. I, I think it, it, it lagged for a second, yeah, and did. so it caused it to try to catch up. The scrying, yeah. Is there a time limit scrying with the immersion method? The immersion method? <laughs> I mean, one minute per level. I mean, my, my eyes are, I don't think that my Tim is, can you drown while Scott? <laughs> of course, Tim is the one Tim, asking. Tim has been trying to drown you the whole night. He, he asked that the first time, too. Well, well, on LMA, you guys were talking about death by, by drowning uh -huh. being brain damage and stuff. He just wants my int to go down. <laughs> he wants it's too high. Down. Sorry. It's, so it would be nine. I could do it for up to nine minutes, then. I could watch them for nine minutes. Wow. You can hold your breath a long time. <laughs> I don't. Th I don't necessarily think. I mean, John described it that way, but I don't think that the pool's all that deep. And I think I only like just you put can, sort of my nose you and yeah, your eyes in. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> under. <laughs> well, I, I imagine it like like in Harry Potter when they do it when they the go back pensieve? into the dreams. And the pensieve. Is that what it's called? The the memories like the, when yeah, they, that, that bowl the big thing. bowl. It's a, the pensieve. Yeah, that's how I imagine it. But I've seen it so. <laughs> you should. It's Amazingly, right. yes. <laughs> They take the memories and drop them in, and they can yeah. submerge them. Very cool. All right. Uh, let's come back, and uh, we will resolve what has happened in just a moment. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do our giveaway. All right, so our first giveaway. Uh, this is the flask uh, of Ako's Revenge, Captain Cade Cardinals. We're going to do... Uh, exclamation point flask give you one more chance to join if you're not already in the giveaway and uh, I'm gonna do this on my night bot here so it'll be automated and we will not be doing the d20 rolls for this we'll save that for the end when we do the overboard giveaway and I'll talk about that overboard giveaway in just a second um, here we go five yes it is an awesome flask it's really cool and uh, so if you're entered in the giveaway, and you are, I see you in there, Mike. If you're a sub, by the way, um, you have a little better chance of winning on here. I think it's weighted just a bit, uh, but everyone can win. Uh, if you've entered, everyone is eligible. All right? You get welcome. All right, here we go. Rolling it, and the winner of the flask is Keith Roger. Roger. Now, Roger, you must be ple present to win. Not pleasant. You can be pleasant, too, if you want to. Uh, but, but Keith, are you still with us? Present is the most. I know he thing. was on earlier. Must be pleasant to win. Uh, we'll give him a few seconds here, and while that's getting ready, I'm going to talk about uh, the Mike Disney print. So, as I was mentioning, it's a great story. If you've not watched Art of Mike Disney, you need to check it out. He streams oh, most mornings. All right. Yes, Roger. Congratulations on the Cade Flask, sir. Uh, the Mike Disney Overgord. Uh, started on one of his streams and it came up as an idea. I think he or one of his fans suggested, hey, make a beholder 
uh, but use jack-o'-lanterns instead of eyes. And Mike said, yeah, I can do that. And the Overgord was born. What a beautiful uh, name. <laughs> and this thing became uh, so well-liked, Reaper picked it up. They're producing a mini of this in their new Born series. Uh, really cool. series. Um, and so uh, Mike now has done several versions of this. Uh, and BGE is Big Gord Energy. This infuses <laughs> all of Mike's work. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give away one of these gorgeous full-color prints of the Overgord. And so I'll get that giveaway started right now. Uh, let me pull up my Nightbot again here and quickly change that keyword. And now what you're going to type is exclamation point Gord, G-O-U-R-D. Isn't that the one he did on screen? Huh? This one right here? Yes, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, that's we, that's one he gave us, yep, exactly. And then we also have, uh, we have some other cool stuff that we'll do other times. I have these very cool uh, Overgord pins. Uh, these things are awesome. Oh, that's fun. And so mm -hmm. just, it, 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 he is an incredible mini painter uh, as well. So check yeah, out his incredible channel. Incredible artist in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. You popped it in our, you popped his uh, channel in our channel. Oh yeah, at the beginning okay. and I will do it again right now. All even. right. Mm -hmm. So, Double up. we resume the action. He's got his whole link tree. You can find him everywhere. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll cut. Get your lights all low. <laughs> Make me all scared. Now, you did say you wanted us to reintroduce our characters for the Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. I did. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead and reintroduce your characters. Um, Alcott, you can do it for the final time. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> this wow. is how he kills me. Wow. He, he kills my dad and then strikes me down. <laughs> well, I won't let that happen, I promise. All right, let's quickly go around this way uh, for our, some of our new okay. followers and viewers tonight. Um, so I'm Irda Leandril. I am a level 8 uh, Skald, level 2 Paladin of Saturn Ray, um, and I'm Asimar. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's me. Oh. <laughs> Alcott Devereaux, wizard extraordinaire. I'm scared out of my mind. <laughs> uh, Eamon, a half orc, uh, level nine magus, and hoping to get his hit points soon. Okay. Hey, I am a level nine swashbuckling pirate. I used to be a level ten till this guy dropped me a level. I am here to protect Alcott because he is the heavenly rum maker for the pickled <laughs> pirates. <laughs> All right, and just to be clear, it was not the DM. Yes, it is. It was the, level. the brain damage. It was the brain damage you took from a you could have whatever. You could have died. died. If I only <laughs> had a brain. <laughs> so so right. Kate is now <laughs> determined to protect Irda from the feathers <laughs> and Alcott because for he can make the rum. So I, for two specific reasons, but they're the same reason. I just want to keep my limbs and so he's I can actively protect y'all. And he's actively trying to get Eamon in trouble. <laughs> So I think he's actually trying to harm me. <laughs> so we see where priorities lie. Yep. Yep. All right, I'll cut. As Dixon's eyes turn up toward you and you see his horrible visage, you feel necrotic energy feedback coming through your scry. Uh, as you try to pull it back, there's a memory that flashes through your mind. You recall as a boy, one time your father had brought home from his travels a leather whip, and it was a full-size whip. He had shown you how to use it, but you, at a mere nine winters of age, uh, tried using it, and as you flipped that whip out, the first couple of times you had done it, uh, it would snap, but it would pop back, and it hit you in the hand and left a stinging mark across your hand. It is that memory that comes to you. It is a similar feeling as your scrying is reaching out. You feel something that snaps back at you through the channel. I need you to roll a d20, please, and add your will save bonus. Okay, good thing I'm good at that. Um, we're gonna use an advantage. Uh, oh, you might have... You uh, feel dark tendrils of psychic energy A natural 20 for a 30. Oh, okay, wow. Okay, a nat 20 on the roll. You feel like, as though it is tentacles touching your mind with some sort of odd psychic energy. It's not arcane. You don't know what you're feeling. You've never felt this before. As it touches your mind, pain sears through. 
by force of will, you manage to cut off the connection. You all hear uh, Alcott scream, Alcott, that rebound, that snap back of the whip. You take five points of psychic damage. Uh, you see Alcott falls on the floor, and he's writhing on the floor in front of you. You were right. Extremely lucky to have gotten out of that as cleanly as I did. He saw me. We need to move. All right. The lights in the room slowly return to normal, uh, but you feel there's almost a soiled air in the room now. Ida and I were speaking about this upstairs. In the morning, we're out. We should go. Get together what you need. Finish up. We need to go. Is that all right? I can only tell you that in the morning. Okay, um, you said uh, uh, Ray was in your room, correct? Yes. Um, can you can you lead me there? Uh, there's something I want to check. Got an advantage. Great. Yes. Follow me. All right. So Cade walks out, leading oh. Yerda out of the room. So no ship crying. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Should have uh, gone before it. Pat 66 was giving already an advantage to Alcott's replacement, so I guess that goes to Alcott since yes. he's not dead yet. Well, well rolled <laughs> saving throw. Thank you. Um, you. Uh, you come back to Cade's room, and mm. you do see Ray laid out on Cade's bed. Uh, again, his head still lolled over, drool coming out of his mouth. All right, so as soon as I come into the room, I am going to, at will, I can use the detect evil spell, um, uh, concentrate on a single item or individual within 60 feet. So I'm concentrating on Ray, and I want to determine if it's evil, and, um, and I'll keep concentrating for the full three rounds to see if I can... Um, Let's see, we're focusing on a uh, uh, yeah. So if I study for three rounds, then I can also determine the strength of the aura of the evil. If yeah, if I stay focused. So, so I'm just gonna immediately look out. Seven may guide me, and then um, she'll focus her her on uh, Ray to see if there's anything evil. If he radiates evil at all. All right, as you do this, thank you, Mike Disney, for re-upping your sub, as well as Megan. And thank you so much uh, for, Megan, for the uh, gift of the Tier 1 sub, and congrats uh, to Thunder Bay. All right, as you concentrate. Focus on Ray's diminutive limp form atop the bed. Mm. Thank you, kids. I need you to know. And then, so I'll go back to the others. Um, uh, so, the, the kid, uh, uh, Ray is definitely not evil. Um, whatever he is, he is at least not that. So, hmm. it's very good to know. It's surprising. I think, <laughs> I think he's just loyal to Ixen because he created well, wait, him. Can we turn him? It will take a lot, I think. Pickles. I think it's going to take more than pickles. What about your god? Saturday? We gotta turn him. He could worship you. Uh, oh. Or your I, god. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would I would welcome him to uh, pray with me, and if he chooses to follow Seren Ray, that would be acceptable, but I am no one to be worshipped. I am a person. He's a goblin. Yes, but uh, <laughs> that makes me very uncomfortable. Um, so we know that at least he is not... He is not intentionally doing anything evil, at least. Well... When you pray yes. to Saren Ray, yes, you gotta have Ray. Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
good joke, Kate. Okay. <laughs> I... Thank you, everybody, for the level three hype train. Thank you, Robert. Uh, and thank you also, uh, follow from Speaking Beast, who's just subbed, and welcome. Uh, we appreciate all of that. All right, so, are you doing anything else before you rest this evening? Did you want to do the for your father? It will have to wait. All right. All right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to put the two of you at the opposite ends of the room, so you're forced to project to each other. <laughs> <laughs> <You speak. laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's him too. Like you're just like yeah. you're just because you're close to each other. And yes. You are speaking. It's, it's good role play because you're speaking in the voices you would speak with. I just want to make sure everybody can hear. All right. So, um, are you doing anything, uh, Alcott? Um, shall we all sleep in the same room tonight? I can alarm the room in case anyone attempts to break in. I, it's all right. I, I plan on waking very early, so I, I mean, this, if it we'll doesn't bother anyone, but I do have something I must do in the morning, and I must wait. I will not leave. If you do not mind my intrusion, what is it? We got three advantages. At the beginning of the week when we first got back. I wrote a letter. And I sent that letter with the, the hawk. I requested a reply. And as of yet, I have not received it. Whether or not I receive a reply will greatly determine my next actions. I do not wish to hinder anybody from carrying out what needs to be done, but I may have to see to a personal matter. I respect this, and I understand your decision. The only thing I will say on it, however, is the hawk will return here, whether you are here or not. I know you wish to see the reply as quickly as possible, and I completely understand this, especially after what I have recently been through. But your aid is invaluable to me. It, that does not escape me. Just earlier, you said, I am here for you. And I know that you are here for me, and I need you there with me. I need you all. Of course. And I understand. But I will make a formal request that you attempt to Overcome that, just this moment, and come with us. If you don't get a reply by tomorrow, and I hope that you do. You shall have your answer in the morning. All right. All right. Anyone else doing anything before you uh, take your repose for the evening? I am going to cast Mage Armor on myself and Alarm on the room. All right. Uh, you cast your spells. And protect the room. Uh, everybody beds down for um, the evening. If anyone needs healing, I will heal them. Yeah, so the only one would be yeah. Alcott, of course. Yes, and, and I'm uh, assuming he would have told her. So. Everybody's healed. All right, I believe you leveled up there, uh, Amon. So go ahead and roll your hit points, please. All right. We roll hit points live on stream so I can make oh, sure they don't cheat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four. I would have gotten it. All right, so we'll add your con. Because it was only uh, five damage. Your but toughness. Yeah. Yeah, right, you have toughness, right? Thank so that gives you the additional hit points. So and then uh, yeah. add your, your constitution is what? One. I did it. No, your constitution was uh, 13. Oh, 14? yeah, 13. 13, yeah, so plus one. All right, so you receive those hit points. You wake up the next morning. Um, there are windows at each level. There is a morning sun just peeking up over the horizon. Uh, Ray has uh, woken up. He was left in the room next door. You hear him in the morning. And he's knocking on your door. Ah, oh, good morning, little buddy. You got a headache? <laughs> Oops. 
From? No. Arr. A little bit might make him feel better, actually. I've heard that helps. I've been a, I've been around <laughs> enough farmhands to know that it, uh, it helps. He's just a greedy little goblin. All right, so he takes a bit of rum and just kind of glowers at Alcott again. When, when he entered, I heard ding in my head because of alarm. <laughs> oh, right, right, Anytime right. Anytime a okay. tiny or a larger creature comes in and doesn't speak the password, I hear right, it. Right, right, true, true. Welcome, Prostozeka Saza Gold underscore <laughs> Lox. All right, I don't know how to pronounce all that, but welcome to the Mad Chatters, the most exclusive chat in all of Twitch D and D. All right, so uh, you're all rested, uh, you are all recovered, and uh, you, Alcott, uh, you see Amon. Uh, he was already up as the rest of you were rousted. Amon, you went outside, and you did in fact go atop the tower uh, here where you had initially sent your hawk off and as you stand and you look uh, toward the east uh, where he flew and you stand atop the tower already again there's a guard up there uh, as you come walking up the stairs he looks over at you oh top of the morning to you good morning we feel right better having you lump inside the, the uh, keep with us will you be staying home i'm afraid not we're supposed to be headed out today I did where? Uh, Magnamar again. Oh, suit yourself. He goes and he kind of turns over the wall and he's just looking out into the forest that surrounds uh, the familiar wind uh, that blows through this area and you cast your gaze off to the west, or the east rather, where your hawk had flown. And you see nothing dotting the sky and no sign of him yet on this now the sixth day. He'll sit there for a while, about an hour. Okay. Uh, as you sit for that hour, the guard occasionally chats you up. Um, you don't find his conversation to be all that intellectually enthralling, uh, but uh, he keeps you company, and you do still see no sign of the hawk as you wait for an hour. Uh, the rest of you see that Haven has been gone for some time. Uh, are you coming downstairs, or what are you doing? Um, uh, I go to the Pickled Pirates and find Ulsa. All right. Uh, as you come out, Cade, um, and you see there is actually now construction underway. Huzzah! And Elsa has a number of hands already early in the morning, men and women and uh, children alike. Uh, you see Mayor Shreed is there, and they're all laboring about uh, now some timbers. Uh, you see your friend... Uh, the hill giant Gerg, Gerg stands there as well, and uh, he is lifting heavy timbers as the work on the pickled pirate has in fact begun. Oh, also it's coming along nicely. Milady, you're doing a fine job. Well, of course I am. What did you think I would do? I told you I would do it well. I'm just telling you you are. So there'll be some more coin, right? Well, I gave you 5,000. Now that's for the supplies and the materials. What about my wage? Take it out of that and I'll pay you more where that came from. Hmm. You see now there are timbers that are stacked in the shape of a prow and it's a four up. Gerg is doing none of the workmanship. Uh, the others are just kind of hammering and fitting the joints together as he brings in the large pieces of lumber from outside. Uh, Irda and Alcott, what are you um, Irda is actually going to look for Shalalu. Yeah, so actually I should have mentioned that. You noted on your third day here, uh, Shalalu was no longer at Fort Juan Frost, and when you inquired, uh, Mayor Shree told you that as soon as you had uh, left for Magnamar, she departed and told, you, and told him she was headed back to Sample. Isn't she supposed to be in there to protect them? She left. <gasps> No. Didn't like her anyway. Good riddance. So then, after after then, that would change her, her goal. 
Um, she's going to go um, actually check on Shadow Mist. Um, she's visited him a few times during the week, but she um, will go down and be like, um, so, friend, I'm going to have to leave you again. And I know it's very soon, and I am sorry, but something very bad happened to Alcott's father, and we uh, need to check on his family, make sure they're all right. Uh, as you're speaking to him, uh, when... When you say the words, uh, leave again, uh, there is, a, he, he shakes his head, uh, no. tussles his mane at you, and stomps his hooves inside the stall I in know. frustration. I know, I know. I, I wish I could take you with me, but with these teleportation spells, I cannot. Um starts snapping and stomping. This is actually the closest that you've never seen uh, a temper tantrum uh, from Shadow Mist, who has always been extremely uh, you know, steady and uh, you know, highly intelligent and loyal and obedient, and yet now he is, he is clearly agitated. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, Alcott uh, and Kate and everyone kind of nearby? I'm just awkwardly standing in yeah, the middle of the You guys are all outside. Keep, um, I don't hear that talk. Like, the other horses are starting to get she, agitated yeah. as uh, he is stomping inside. She's, she's going to um, keep kind of rubbing uh, Shadow Mist's neck and she's going to look and over to Alcott and say, um, how, how soon are we wanting to go? As absolutely soon as possible. Well, there's something I would like to do first. Um, I think that Shadow Mist here could use a, a stretch of the legs. It seems fine. It seems that Eamon is still waiting. So what she'll do is she'll actually bring him from the stable, saddle him up. She's going to get on and she's going to uh, ride him out of the keep and she just wants to let him run a little bit. Um, ride him, run a little bit, just, you know, nearby, not far from the fort. Just so that he can have a chance to just stretch his legs, because she knows he hasn't in a while. All right. Uh, so you take him outside. Uh, he, as soon as he sees your, uh, you know, you're saddling him up, and you're you're about to lead him out. He calms down, uh, and in moments you have him outside, and he, without you even giving him the command, he begins to stretch his legs to a full gallop through the snow. Uh, clearly, just overjoyed to be outside the keep and to be able to stretch his legs for a moment. So she'll just kind of ride him back and forth. This is at least a little bit of what I can do for you. All right, what's everyone else doing as this is happening? Uh, after Eamon waits, um, he'll turn to the guard. Are you up here most days? Oh, we rotate. Sometimes I get the other tower, sometimes I'm down tending to the keep. What? I would ask you to do something for me. Every day that you are on the wall in the morning, an hour after sun rises, fix your eyes on the eastern sky and wait for a hawk. I mix. You see hawks and eagles and all kinds of things here on the mountain. Yes. This hawk will fly directly to this tower. Uh, oh, we go in there. Oh, we get it. I'll peg him for you for sure. <laughs> that is not what I want you to do. <laughs> he, he chuckles. I need you to l allow him to land here. He should be carrying a letter. Take that leather, take the hawk. He will turn into a small statue. His, his brow <laughs> furrows at you. Um, Magic. Magic. Oh, I see you with the portrait. He's been giving you some of that rum, has he? <laughs> no, I am not drunk. I know it sounds strange. Here is a gold for your time. And upon my return, if you have the letter and the gold, I will give you another. All right. Seems to be just fine. I've got nothing better to do up here anyway. Thank you. And Eamon will 
come down out of the tower, um, assuming he saw Irda ride off. Uh -huh. um, he'll find Alcott. Alcott. What would it take f oh! for you? <laughs> <laughs> What would you need from me to scry on somebody? You would need to sit down with me, give me as detailed a description as you can, and if you are an artist, draw a likeness of them if you can. I can assist you with that. I assisted Cade, and I show a picture of, what's Sully. the name? Sully? Sully. 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 <laughs> You've never met, but right, yeah. it, it seems a pretty lifelike image. Okay. <laughs> um, if you have any possessions, if you have even a part of their body, maybe a lock of hair. He'll reach into his pack and he'll pull out his old wraps. Would these work? They were given to me by him. That would work. Okay. I haven't prepared that spell today. Oh, well, that is unfortunate. But <laughs> not unexpected. I was attempting to be a bit more... Defensively prepared for what we might see. Understandable. Are you coming with us? I gave you my word. And I believe that he would be disappointed if I did not keep that word. No matter what I know about his condition or not. So I will go. And I will keep mine to you. Tomorrow, at my earliest convenience, we will scry together. Thank you. All right. Is everybody ready to go? Well, you see, uh, as Irda comes Riding back in, Shadow Mist is in a full lather. Uh, she guides the horse back over to the stables. Uh, the monstrous steed barely fits inside, a full uh, five hands taller than the horses to either side. Uh, she goes through uh, the routine of brushing him out and preparing him. As she does this, Cade, uh, you're looking over uh, the, the construction of the pickled pipe. Hey! And you see there are several bustling laborers, uh, Gerg moving back and forth, uh, carrying wood with him. And uh, it seems to be progressing quite well. Mayor Shreve walks over uh, to you, he adjusts the monocle in his eye. It seems to be coming along quite well. Hi, it is, it is, a pickled pirate. It's, it's going to be magnificent. Oh, wait, it just started before I could. <laughs> wait, do you have a thing? <laughs> Apparently he has a thing. Hey, everyone loves music. Oh, welcome to the Pickled Pirate, where the rum is from above. Welcome, Rose F.K. the Pirate. He's the one we know and love. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's, there's laughter all around uh, as you do that, and uh, let's try one more time uh, in keeping with the sea shanty. We'll all try to do this together. It's for well, the wait, 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 wait. welcome to the pickle pirate. Welcome with with, with the rum, and where the rum is from uh, above. Everyone, everyone knows, loves Kate. No, everyone pirate. knows Kate the pirate. He's the one we know and love. Okay, here we go. We'll start it over again. Huh. Ready? Oh, welcome to the pickle pirate, where the rum is from above. Everyone knows K the pirate. He's the one we know and love. All right, and uh, this goes on and on one more time. Huzzah, K. Uh, bravo, sir. Uh, and uh, within moments, the beautiful. labor and the work has picked up quite a bit. Uh, there is enthusiasm among the workers. Uh, Kate the, has invented the jingle. The, 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 uh, the cadence 
uh, of the work has picked up and everyone just cadence. seems to continue to <laughs> the sing yeah. uh, the, 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 the cadence uh, of the Cade song. And, oh, hey, song. Redbeard is here. You do a sea every high tide. Oh, yeah. A pirate Redbeard. twice a day. Oh, the captain is back. Um, I don't know why, really for like some that. reason, uh, Casey Redbeard, he's one of our earlier followers, although we have others here that have followed us longer, longer. Uh, but he does have his own mascot for some reason. I don't know how this happened, uh, but there is our Redbeard mascot. He just appeared mascot. in yeah. your house one day. He just appeared one day in our house. All right, uh, Alcott, you have everyone now gathered around you as the bustling labor occurs around Fort Von Frost. Everyone, just to be clear, we are going to my parents' house in Sandpoint. That is to ensure that my family is safe. All right. I would like to at least spend the night there, and then the next day we shall go to Magnamo, where we can hopefully find Ixon and deal with him. Although, I did see a figure behind him, who I believe to be maybe his teacher, possibly dangerous and maybe not smart to go see, but. Probably not. We will determine that when we get there. Very well. I'm feeling brave today. Good. All right. That was good. Type exclamation point Gord in the chat. Uh, we're going to be doing our giveaway here in just a little bit. This will be the Over Gord print from Mike Disney. Gorgeous artwork and part of the new Reaper Bones Kickstarter. All right. I'm going to do my fun flourish of putting circles and on the ground. Before in front of we've left, she would have told Shreve again that they were going to leave. How long? And, I, I would yeah. probably tell him anywhere between three yeah. to five days. Yeah. Okay. All right. You you give all the information. Uh, you do see you've encouraged the townspeople. Just your presence for these several days. Uh, there are a myriad of other conversations that took place during that time, which are not recorded here mm -hmm. or in the annals of our Discord. But your presence among the people has once again buoyed their spirits, and it is clear that Fort Von Frost has moved from a straggling, uh, bedraggled, and overrun fort on the edge of civilization to now the new home for the displaced peoples of Turtleback Ferry who are in fact making home here in this fort, and you, its patrons, the lady of the fort, and the Castilian now, uh, Mayor Shreed, taking good care of the fort. Uh, Alcott draws his arcane runes in the snow on the ground. Take everybody's hands. Yep. <laughs> Send point Devereaux Manor, Portis. Huzzah! And I need to roll. <laughs> Go ahead and well. give us the roll. It'd be crazy uh, if the one place you we don't make that familiar home. feeling of vertigo. Uh, your head spin uh, with a dizziness. Everything around you grows hazy. You see Fort Von Frost. Uh, now you're standing in it. Now it's as though you're looking at it from afar, as though you gaze down from the sky, and you're quickly sucked away. Oh, we're good. Close. But in 89, we make it. 89. And also, I need to caution you, don't always be sure you know what the rules need to be, because there are many DM-related modifiers that okay. are beyond the base tables, but in fact, your 89 is good enough, because these are, of course, uh, the lands of your home. Good to know. Um, I was trying to aim us for um, the forest outside where I used to birdwatch in. Okay. All right. So you do, in fact, uh, you nail it. Uh, and in moments, you find yourself in that familiar forest. Um, it is uh, here covered with snow, uh, but not nearly as much as up at Fort Von Frost. It's just a light dusting. Uh, there is much more foliage here. Close to the coast, uh, you don't get much of the true winter season. Um, and there is the sound of birds and forest life around you, even here in winter. You all... Uh, as you land, there's, a, there's sort of a momentary disorientation, and you find yourself in a forest. You recognize this. You've all been around Sandpoint before. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to get used to that. I'm mm. lost. <laughs> ah, Sandpoint. We, we are the heroes of Sandpoint. Good to know. Yeah. Huzzah. There's a statue. There's a statue, right. Really kind of embarrassing. This is <laughs> not news, Cade. We've heard it. Um. Now you get to see why. Well, oh, right. you're currently speaking to one of the major leaders of Sandpoint. Evidently. Oh. Me. What? It is a family. Because my father and brother are dead. Remember that oh, part of the story, Oh, yes. But I don't know them. They were not around when we were here. Sorry. Right. 
Well, we'll go I, to your family. <laughs> I, yes, I will never get tired of Sandpoint Air. Uh, a little salty. But that's well, we protected it. For you. Well, thank you. Yes. I, I You'll feel the statue <laughs> in the center. All right. Um, yeah, we walk our way to the manor, and I'm totally sorry that we told you not to prepare this. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, no, no you, have, you never have to tell me anything. All right, so as you, um, as you walk into Sandpoint, uh, you see the normal bustle of the town, the new cathedral, uh, freshly dedicated at the Swallowtail Festival, which was really just uh, a matter of, yes? Sorry, before we walk into town, I'm going to cast Alter Self. I have just recently learned it. Okay. And I'm going to take on the appearance of just a random townsperson. All right, Just guys. a Joe Schmo with a big, long black beard. As you often uh, like to do, you recognize it. Uh, you point out often how you're not an actual normal common person. <laughs> uh, and so you change yourself into one uh, that well, I'm well known like here, I would say. <laughs> so. Um, um, yes, you absolutely will, Mike. Uh, so as you're walking into town, you come across the familiar bridge... Uh, that goes across the river leading into town, and townspeople bustle about. You uh, do see the as you're walking towards your manor, and you pass uh, the town square. You see the statue uh, that was referenced previously. Um, you, of course, are notably absent from it, <laughs> uh, but you see uh, this statue, which includes uh, uh -oh. the four original heroes of Sandpoint. And I'll show this to all of our fans. Thank you, Phantom! That's for the party. Everyone gets uh, an advantage and an extra one for K. Oh, yeah. Huzzah! Uh, that's, Huzzah! That's Thank you. Pickle Pirate Polka Performer and, pri and <laughs> Proprietor. <laughs> Ten times Pickle right Pirate Polka Performer and Proprietor. <laughs> yeah. All right, and so there is the statue of the four oh, Irda. of Sandpoint. We what go, do we do with Ixen? We go from left to right. Ixen, oh. Irda. Solomon von Frost. I should knock his head Dave. off. Ixon, of course, the betrayer, uh, the one that was spied earlier, now in service to a lich and going through some sort of wicked uh, transformation. Mm. Uh, the lovely Irda now, who had, has the ability to sprout her wings as an Azimar. Solomon von Frost, for whom the far fort is dead, who now <laughs> named his <laughs> dead, <laughs> lies dead, um, crushed uh, amidst the battles with the stone giants in the Hook Mountains. And then uh, Cade, uh, who no longer resorts to this uh, really uh, cheap, humble, cheap rum, uh, but has finer <laughs> stuff. I like that the statue included the bottle of rum, by the way, <laughs> just to commemorate. <laughs> um, and uh, you do, uh, as you're moving towards your manor, uh, there is a, you, you see there is some chatter, and there is a local... Um, you know, it's a, it's a local news pamphlet that goes out once a week in uh, Sandpoint that carries news from surrounding areas. And there seems to be quite a bustle going around today about whatever's in the pamphlet. You see several people talking about it. Are there, is there, is there like a town crier that I could get one from? Um, you don't see a town crier out. Sometimes you've seen him out, but he doesn't seem to be out right now. But several people have the paper and they're talking about it. Could you three give me a moment? Yes. Okay, at some point we should stop and see Emeko before we leave. Oh, huzzah! Yes, we should. I want to walk up to one of these groups. All right. Uh, you walk over, you see there's um, two middle-aged men and a woman that looks like she's honing in on 70, uh, all standing around. You actually recognize the woman as one of the commoners. You saw her around town when you were growing up. And uh, they're all looking at a sheet of paper um, parchment and the old woman she shakes her head uh, and she says it's just no right it's not as uh, i don't have such evils of foot not since the chopper have we seen such a thing yes it's it's it's, well, it's it's damnable i say it is uh, there's no doubt about it it's not for normal eyes to see no polite i'm sorry you saw it hi um sorry i've been a bit Busy recently. Um, what's going on? Can't believe I've missed the news. Uh, it's awful. Uh, they're getting better with these presses, though. Uh, they've, got a, they've got a picture of it in here. Um, a grisly, grisly murder. Um, such things happen all the time in the big city, but uh, this, it's, 
It's awful. Can I see? Found. They found him. Oh, what was left of him? Strung up in the town square. They did. They say is that every inch of his flesh was ripped off his body. And they hold up a picture, and you see there is a fairly detailed pencil scrawling uh, that has been uh, clearly reprinted with a press. And uh, as you look at it, it is um, it is galling uh, beyond belief. As you as you stare for a moment, it, it's difficult for you to reconcile what you're seeing. Dance, um... While you're looking at this, what's the rest of the party doing? Well, we were attending Alcott, so I'm guessing we're waiting for him. Yeah. Just waiting, I'm watching Alcott have the conversation, but I'm, I'm not part of it at all. I'll just, um... Just sort of back away, sort of shocked. Thanks, I was a bit out of the loop. And I'm just gonna walk back to the group, look at everyone, mm -hmm. and puke on the ground. Oh. Um, as he pukes on the ground, you all look at the sheet of paper, mm. and you see uh, an image of what looks like it might once have been human, uh, but indeed has been flayed. Oh. Um, arm chopped off, body stripped of flesh, um, a horrific visage, eyes gouged out. Alcott, you know instantly, it reconciles with the pain that you felt through the connection. This was once your father, not just killed, uh, but tortured, not just torture, but slain in the most uh, public spectacle fashion and hung in the midst of the Magnamar Square uh, in such fashion that even just, uh, not even two days later, it has traveled this far to Sandpoint. I am going, we are going to deal with Ixon. Did Ixon do this? I do not doubt that his hand is in He's a really gun. Evil. Yes. The last time I saw him, he... Well, I... We... He was with us. I, I think we are beyond evil at this point. Oh. But how... He was a friend at one time. Yet he has changed since even the last time you saw him. Yes. He's gone, gone to white skin. Stark white hair. He's gone even deeper into this. I don't want him to do this to me! We need to move. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Quickly, please. Mm -hmm, yes. Can I knock the head off the statue? Uh. Yeah, I, mean, I, I angrily. Try. With what? I don't know! You have a sword. Kate walks sword. over to the statue. Uh, this Wait, is no, don't I have something else? Well, I, yeah, you have your inventory. I have your inventory. Hold on. I have something else. I'm not going to use my good sword. That would be foolish. Oh, wait. People bustle about. Um, Her magic string. <clears throat> oh, the magic string! She doesn't have it. No. You do. Huh? It'd be awesome if I had stone shape ready right now. I'm a statue slayer. You're a you got, <laughs> she got that nickname as a joke because she kept attacking every statue. Oh yeah, that found. was even even recently. <laughs> mm, I don't She's think not I have actually, anything. I only have an hand axe. As you are um, looking at the statue, deciding what to do with it, um, are you gonna swing at it or what are you doing? Oh, I don't want to ruin my good sword. Well, like so, hitting, it, it, hitting a stone statue with it would likely do that, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to take out my uh, cheapy rapier. <laughs> a rapier is definitely not going to do the trick. You're smart enough. Sword. Even Cade is smart enough to know <laughs> that a rapier is not <laughs> A cutlass? I should have let oh, no. her cry. Yeah. Yeah. All right, how about the hand axe? That might do it. All right, so if you walk over there, uh, as you Holy pull out your hand axe, um, and you start... Uh, 
as he starts doing this, Eamon turns to Irda and Alcott, and I say, leave him to his follies. Let's go. Uh, he's very he, impulsive. Uh, as, 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 he's, as he's chiseling away... And his head! You know, I know. Uh, he has a neck. Uh, as he's chiseling away at, at the head of Ixen, several people stop to look at what's going on. Um, one of the one of the townswomen passing by. Are you okay? What? Why are you doing that to Ixen? He's one he's of betrayed you. us. He's evil. No. Yes. No, him. Help me get his head off. As you're talking, Alcott, you notice Ray is on the ground, and he has taken snow, and he's piling it up, um, almost in the form of a snowman. Um, he makes a little head and a little body, and he takes two sticks and he puts them in his arms, and he looks up at you. There's this is this I can't understand you. And I've, I've got to be honest. All right. I cast Comprehend Languages. <laughs> Say that, please, one more time. I just hold up one finger and one more. As you as you cast your spell, he's repeating the same words over and over again with greater urgency. And he looks at you and he says, Sheep! <laughs> points down at the little snowman. Ray! He's gone! See? Gone! He pokes at him. <laughs> you need to give him some lessons. <laughs> and we'll stop there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, ah. everybody. So, we have our heroes back at the town of Sandpoint as um, we have Kate chopping away. Uh, at the statue, which was once his former companion uh, of, of Ixen. Uh, we have uh, Eamon just losing patience with Cade at every turn. Uh, and then, of course, we have the horrible revelations of uh, Alcott's father, who was abducted recently, and now, through a combination of scrying and connecting dots with the news, uh, comes to learn that his father was not only slain, uh, but horribly tortured and put up as a spectacle, a flayed man, bereft of flesh and dignity in the midst of Magnamar. And now Ray, who, uh, this little companion, this familiar, uh, that had, had left Ixen and gravitated toward Cade, he is not evil. Uh, Irda tried to sense evil, but he is clearly conflicted. And his questions have moved from what is God to now showing himself fashioning a man in snow and declaring that he is God. And if you followed uh, the storyline, you know that Ixen, the betrayer, the alchemist, actually created uh, uh, Ray. Ray is a created being through alchemy and arcane power uh, as a familiar, and Ray clearly struggling with his own sense of identity and connection to Ixen. As we come back next week with our Rune Lord session 53, uh, the party in Sandpoint, hoping to return to Magnamar. But Shalalu, came running up right as oh. Ray made those proclamations of his own diminutive deity and Shalalu says we have danger danger is coming here to Sandpoint it is imminent the giants they are coming here mm. He's just always <laughs> giant. Why? We'll stop there for the Mom evening. Snow has got to be oh, giant. All right. Can I get shot with the giants? <laughs> Everybody uh, type exclamation point gourd. Gourd. Hit the chat, and we'll have our giveaway in a moment. It is gorgeous. Uh, but thank you, everybody. Had a great day today. Thanks for all the mad chatters. Uh, <laughs> lots of new subs, lots of followers. Thank you for the level three hype train. Thank you yeah. for Gronk, uh, who gave us a rating, of course, Greyhawk Tales, who rated us with a party of 19 and followers. Thank you for all of that. It's time for our Mike Disney artwork giveaway, the amazing Overgore. Now, here's how this works. If you've never seen it done at Blue Box for our big end of the show giveaway, we don't just roll uh, on the night bot. We have our players roll for our viewers. So, 
Uh, we're going to do two things. I didn't even get to roll at all this time. So we are going to have, yeah, well, there's no combat. Uh, you guys never got to the combat parts of it. I had all kinds of combat things, but there was lots of role play happening. Uh, so uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have each one of these players is going to tell you why they should be stream MVP. You're going to have the chance to vote for them as stream MVP. You say, well, why would that matter? Well, aside from the bragging rights, and they do care, it's a source of pride for these players to be recognized by the viewers as having great role play for the session. It also gets, with this party in their level, 2,000 additional experience points for that player based on your vote for them as stream MVP. Now, when uh, they make their pitch for stream MVP, uh, I will then roll on Nightbot. If you see your name pop up, don't get too excited initially. We're going to do four different names, one for each player, and they will roll D20s to see who wins the gorgeous Mike Disney Overgord print. Uh, I think I've explained that well enough. So let's start over here. Let's go in opposite order this time. Uh, Irda, tell us why you should be stream MVP. All right, so she should be stream MVP uh, for continuing to uh, do research and collect all the information together to try to discover the central point of all of this, um, as well as her role play with Alcott in particular, um, the prayer for his father after she learned that he had died, um, and her being willing to um, also do the ceremony for him in the way that would be most appropriate. Um, giving Shadow Mist a little bit of a stretch of the legs because he's been stuck in the fort for a long time. Um, just, but yeah, it was it was primarily uh, the role play with uh, Alcott today, I would say. Yeah, a lot of role play with so. Alcott and yes. uh, very interesting stuff. So, uh, we're going to roll the first one. And by the way, it's not too late for you. Uh, we'll do this three more times. Uh, the first is... Cardman! Cardman 2467. Uh, let us know if you are still on. Uh, that is Ian. Ian has won before. Let me see what Ian won previously. I'm trying to remember here and pull up my spreadsheet. Uh, Ian won, oh, the ornament, okay. uh, our Christmas ornament. Awesome. He won that. He's um, and he is in here. So, and he is a sub. And so. he is a sub. So, Ian, you will get 2D20 as we're showing the uh, Pat Draws artwork, incredible fan art. Um, join our Discord if you haven't already. Our Discord is a fun place to be every single week. Let's go to Alcott. Why should you be stream MVP? Alcott should be stream MVP for helping Cade to lay out the pickled pirate. Huzzah! Huzzah! Speaking with Eamon about, you know, some family history, the, and eventually getting into more of Eamon's side of things to try and pull some of Eamon's backstory out. Um, for eventually casting Scry for the first time to try and learn information about what's really going on in the world without having to be there. To learn that his father died, an extremely emotional reaction, getting into his backstory, telling you the story of his brother's death, and that now apparently Alcott is the head of the Devereaux household and doesn't necessarily like that. Um, but, you know, I mean, just moving the party forward, going into Ixen, and that nat 20 to not get damaged heavily in his brain and seeing what Ixon was doing, the dolls, the feathers, just learning as much as we can. Very clutch nat 20 um, shift and it was, and, and then moving into us teleporting to Sandpoint, learning what we can about all of that and just, there's a lot of emotions going through Alcott and me attempting to role play those as best I can. Because boy is it difficult. <laughs> yeah, no, and I thought you did a great job with it and just so you know, um, that reverberating snapback effect that you were feeling through Scry, um, had you failed, there was going to be permanent intelligence damage applied. Um, oh, it was yeah. a significant counter spell, and again, not typical arcane that he was using, something yeah. you've never sensed before. Uh, all right. Uh, what are you rolling for? Oh, sorry, oh, yes. yes, thank you. <laughs> you are rolling for... DM Dingbat! Alright, uh, let's go Dingbat! DM Dingbat. And I don't think and he ever won anything. He just, he just, just, he just sub. Uh, congratulations, so you get two D20s on yes. the roll as well. Because he just messaged in chat, so he knew he's still here. Alright, oh no, I have to, yeah, I'm sorry. So he's been yeah, following he since he December of 2020, mm -hmm. and I don't see when he subbed, but he is a sub. Yep. And he is here. Alright, congratulations, you are in the, the uh, running for the giveaway. Uh, Eamon, um, why Eamon, should you be stream MVP? Eamon should be stream MVP. Um, I think for his uh, his 
understanding of Alcott and 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 what he's he's going through at this moment. He's he's had a number of physical reactions mm -hmm. that are hints to his backstory, and he's he's. I'm really interested to see his reaction with the, the scrying because it's. I think it's going to require Eamon to divulge a whole lot more about his backstory mm, I'm than very, he has to I'm this I'm very point. excited about yeah. this. Um, so, um, and just, he, he was not going to go. Um, he was going to go east, um, but um, he thought of uh, what would be expected of him, and uh, he chose to stay with the party at this time. Yeah, yeah, well done. And um, I thought you know some of your uh, better role play today, Bruce. Well, Super so awesome. Nicely done. Uh, all right, uh, you're going to be rolling four, and let's see who has Amen, heard that name in a while. Uh, for yeah, their die roll. And again, a reminder: this is the Mike Disney Overgored color print. And uh, it's not too late for you. Uh, type exclamation point Gord. We'll have one more roll after this one. Uh, you, Eamon, will be rolling for Shift 70 Up. Uh, he Shift just 70 Up. Commented. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's a newer follower as well. Uh, yeah, just followed us a couple of days ago okay, um, and on he's the 10th on Tuesday. So, brand new follower. Uh, not a sub currently. Uh, so, you get one D20 uh, for. Uh, shift 70 up, and now we're going to go to Cade. Why should Cade be stream MVP? Or I should be stream MVP because I'm Cade. That's why. <laughs> well, uh, this time around, I did not get to scry on my ship, but you wanted to. Um, let's see. Oh, well, got to working on the pickled pirates. And uh, got Ulsa her money to start on it. It's looking mighty fine. I also created a little jingle, sea shanty, for me pickled pirates. And started hacking away at Ixen statue in Sandpoint. And I got Ray Drum. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that. Uh, Sometimes they for, for, for a dinghy here, size tavern. Well, you have to remember, Pat, this is actually a three level tavern. It well. is not dinghy size. Uh, with an it's open gonna air. be three stories, and I'll tell you something else. It's gonna have a plank <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> and I'll oh, tell you this. Yeah, there's you're there's for drunk people to walk off of. <laughs> well, there three needs to be some fun games. So. There's right. going to be a walk the plank game. Right. Just wait. So you choose who you want to vote for. The poll is going up in the arms. Switch in just a moment. Uh, I see we just have two more people join. Old school Army <laughs> and Sanaba Dane. Sanaba Aragdane. Uh, Sanaba Aragdane uh, also just joined the giveaway. And we're going to roll. Wait, who did, I roll? who did I win for? Oh, sorry. Three, two, one. It is. Oh, and I just said his name. Sanaba Aragdane. Oh, Sanaba Aragdane. Sanaba Aragdane. I've been following us since last Are you Danish? And it's a sub. Uh, so I know he's here or she's here because they just subbed and they've never won on our channel before. So uh, good for them. All right. So everybody's a sub uh, with the exception of uh, yours, Chris. Uh, which is who Vote for your stream MVP. Uh, shift. Yes. Ah, shift rum for votes. Rum yeah, for votes. All right. And let's go ahead and let's start with your role. Okay. Uh, I'm rolling for card man. Here we go. Card man. Ian. Oh, natural 20. Subscribed. A nat 20 what? for Ian. Okay, oh, so the no. bar is set. By the way, Shift 70 just subbed, so now you've got 2d20, and you're going to need it. Um, yeah. Because we have a we have a d20 on the table, but that's okay. If you figure it, we got never one one of these. We have six dice that are still never? to be rolled, so that's so. that's almost like that's about a 30 or 28 percent bad. chance that somebody else will get a nat 20. So there's still a good shot. All right, go ahead. Oh yeah, two. Two d20. Tell us who you're rolling for. Uh, it is for. Nat 20! DM Ding Rat, I got a Nat 20! Nat, another Nat 20, okay! Woo! Uh, so we have yes. a Nat 20 for Ding Bat, a Nat 20 for Cardman. It's gonna happen. Uh, Alright, let's go. We're coming over I, here. Shift, shift 70. 70. Just sub. You gotta give him a D20. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, 13. A 13. Sorry. Uh, very sorry, uh, Shift 70. Uh, but we'll be back on Tuesday night and we'll have another we'll giveaway. And your one. sub will yeah. still be active, my friend. All right. Kate, tell us what you're rolling for. Sub. Savat Orgdain. All right. There we go. Uh, a... Sounds very Viking ish. Oh, sorry. 215. <laughs> I got 30. Uh, 30. No, we don't have them together. <laughs> All right, so we have a roll off. Mine would have been a 37 if we added them together, anyway. So. Yeah, they did. Except we didn't have any combat today, Keith. All right, so, so well, but, I, but I got it when it counted. Yeah, that's right. What's, okay. one, what's one this time, right? All right, one D20, and you're going to roll at the same time. Uh, you're rolling for Dingbat, you're rolling for Cardman. On three. One, two, three, roll! Four. 16. Oh! Oh! Dingbat, congratulations! All right, so Woo! DM Dingbat, you have to, if and you're not already, got to be in no our Discord. Contest. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. And just send oh, me wow. a direct <laughs> message in Discord. I'll be blue box on my Discord. Yep. Uh, and I need your address and your, your full name and your yep. mailing address. And we'll get that Mike Disney Overgord print out to you. Also, uh, congratulations to Keith, who earlier won this very cool flask, uh, the Amako's <laughs> Revenge flask. And thank you to everybody. Always nice. We get a lot of new followers. Thank you again to Greyhawk Tales for a fantastic raid today with 19 people coming in. We thank appreciate you. that. Um, love the community. Don't forget GaryCon. Uh, there was earlier today days. still one spot open on my uh, open game on Saturday. It might be gone now. I'm going to post it in my Discord today. It will for sure be gone after I do that. So uh, make sure if you're interested, you oh. jump on that right away. And with that, that said, one. we are going to do a raid today of our friends. Thank at you, guys. Not great RPG because they do have great RPG. And uh, who won the Alcott? I did. Alcott. 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 Yeah. Do you know what that puts me at? Uh, 450 XP away from leveling I, up. God, I'll probably be at least a month before I give out more XP. Yeah, so. at this point. <laughs> just just right. give me a ball. Just, well, just, I better get my XP. Love for Blue Box. Register for Gary Khan. We'll see you Tuesday. Greyhawk. Global time, 5 o'clock Central. Blue Box signing out. Okay. So. Man, 400.